number of attendees are very less, sir. 28 only. Uh -huh, just with, uh, it will be ready now. Okay, okay. Fine, no problem. Hello. Hello, sir. Sir. Yes, yes. Going. Am I audible, sir? And yes, sir. You are, audible. you are audible. Your voice is coming nicely. Okay, and sir. Uh, you put it on your video. So this one is also there. Actually, within uh, a minute. Uh, yes, please tell me. No, 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 no issue, sir. For safety purpose, I have a joint fault at two locations, sir. In yes, yes. Moment. For safety purpose. <laughs> Uh, so, just now we, we are going to start the program. So, myself has joined and one more speaker and myself will be there. Now, shall we start the program? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You may, sir. Okay. Thank you. Dear participant, Good afternoon, and uh, uh, my dear Professor uh, Jha and uh, Sudesh Naji, and as well as uh, other uh, the panelists, and also dear participants, a warm, a warm welcome to you. Now we are having the second day program of the three days training on vulnerability and risk assessment in Gangetic Plains. And it is going on in collaboration with Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Central Agricultural University, Osa Samastipur. Now, it is the second day, and in this second day, we are having three speakers for different topics. And before handover, uh, that today's session will be moderated by uh, Dr. Sudeshna from this uh, uh, university site. And she is having, she is a good moderator, obviously. And before hand over the stage to him, I'll put forward the yesterday's proceedings. And yesterday, you know that uh, inaugural session was there. For that, keynote address was given by Professor Surya Prakash, head GMR division, NIDM. And during his uh, during his address, he highlighted how the Gangetic Plains were blessing. Basically, it is a blessing because it is, it is a fertile land and it gives a lot of crop production in that area as well as the drinking water for industry and, and the other water for industry and other purposes. It is a bestow of man and it is a huge quantity of water is there, those who are especially uh, residing in the Gangetic Plain. And parallelly he said that it is of, that plain is very much vulnerable in, in the context of disaster also, a lot of disasters were happened. Thereafter, that uh, special address was given by Professor P.S. Brahmanand on behalf of Honorable Bhishi because he was engaged on that day suddenly uh, with very important program. And Professor Brahmanand, though he was out of station, but still he has delivered his uh, special address. He focused that climate change is now a harsh reality in the present time and strategizing and uh, maneuvering the co uh, course of action to tackle the same is the greatest challenge for the scientific community. He also emphasized how different organizations should collaborate to uh, assess, analyze, and quantify the risk prevailing in different parts of the country. It may be Gangetic Plain, but or it may be in other area also. He was 
of opinion that development of varieties of resistance varieties resistance to climatic stress could be possible solution for immediate tackling of crop yield and he conduct, concluded his speech by citing that initiative of the university that is rajendra prasad central university agriculture and icr iwm have been opting to tackle the impacts of climate change related disaster this is a very big issue but still then we have to try for keeping in view the uh, put, uh, easy life for the future thereafter te uh, technical session was started and that eminent speaker first was their professor sarman singh he was a former director of aims gopal he has given the lecture on biosecurity measures to mitigate biohazards dr singh focused on various types of biohazard and he was of the opinion that most biohazards were due to errors and or negligence uh, of mankind he listed out the various incidents of biohazards which have claimed the lives lives on several innocent people however a few incidents could be attributed to the moral and ethical faults of the organization such as bhopal gas tragedy amri hospital fire in calcutta and he subsequently highlighted how the temperature is rising and humidity could influence the virulence of the pathogens 60% of which were transmitted from animals that is animal bacteria and viruses to mankind he concluded by emphasizing that future climate would be warmer and drier with intense rainfall which will help in proliferation of diseases and injuries thereafter only way to mitigate climate change is through the practice of reduce reuse and recycle these are the vital things it has to be one has to the mankind has to follow to reduce the climate change after the second lecture was there dr hemangsu sekhar mandal he is scientist in national center for seismic minister of earth science delhi he talked on the topic importance of seismic micro zonation study to prepare earthquake resilient structures in indian cities dr mandal initiated his speech by depicting how the intensity of earthquakes are highest around the epic epicenter which decreases with its intensity in the area covered he also focused how the higher amount of alluvial soil in a region could pose a greater loss or greater threat due to earthquake in case of basin the angles of basins could be could also be determined the vulnerability in area so wherever the very population density is there the vulnerability is more and gangetic plain in that in that context is very very uh, important and that's why it is facing severe things whenever any kind of disasters is happening and overall 192 participants were present uh, shown their presence in the uh, online through the cisco ibex so this was the for the yesterday's and today we'll be having three important lecture first our eminent speaker professor aknesh kumar jha he'll speak he is from the same university he is project director of climate advanced studies and of the same university that is rajendra prasad uh, in central university of agriculture pusha and he will be talking on drought vulnerability risk assessment and mitigation measure in this gangetic plain after that a change is there that disaster management plan that is very important things is required to know by our participants so that's why one important class has been given disaster management plan features and tools it will be taught from our nidm site one uh, important speaker dr rahul kumar barma he will speak on the second after that i will speak on gis in disaster risk reduction so this is the today's orientation and further i will hand over the stage to dr sudeshna to continue and carry out the further program dr sudeshna please thank you sir thank you thank you so much and uh... <laughs> welcome all to the second day of the training three day online training and uh, uh, our first speaker today is dr ratnesh kumar jha i would just like to introduce him briefly uh, dr ratnesh kumar jha is the project director of center for advanced studies on climate change and uh, he belongs to the department of agronomy 
Dr. Rajendra Prasad Central Agriculture University, Pusa. And he is also the nodal officer of National Agricultural Disaster Management Plan. Presently, he is the principal investigator of project Climate Resilient Agriculture Program, funded by Ministry of Agriculture, Government of Bihar, and of the project entitled Scaling Up Climate Smart Agriculture Through Mainstreaming, Mainstreaming Climate Smart Villages in Bihar, under National Adaptation Fund by Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India. Dr. Jha has been relentlessly working as the principal investigator of national innovation on climate resilient agriculture from Feb NICRA from February 2011 to November 2017. He has had more than 25 years of working experience in the field of agricultural research and extension activities in KVKs as well as in the university and worked extensively in the areas of hazards and disasters, both natural and man-made. He was the course director of ICR sponsored winter school. And apart from this, Dr. Jha organized and conducted, delivered expert lectures in several national, international seminars and symposiums. He has got several awards, such as the best environmental scientist award and scientist of the year award by Disha, best KVK zonal award and best KVK award of the university. He has to his credit, a number of publications, more than 25 research papers published in peer reviewed journals and seven invited papers in national and international conferences, uh, symposium seminars, three books published on different subjects, eight reports, reviews, and also published 12 training manuals and more than 30 extension folders and leaflets. Presently, he is also in charge of the district agricultural contingent plan by Krida Hyderabad with the help of KVKs. He has established linkages and working with a number of organizations like CPRI Shimla, NIDM New Delhi, IUINDRR, and uh, CIP Lima Peru, and IRI Philippines to improve technical skills and establish research collaborations for the benefit of the university, scientists, and students. He has also been instrumental in development of climate resilient village Suket on crop residue management, which has recently been recognized by our honorable prime minister during his address to the nation in his 80th edition of Man Ki Baat. Dr. Jha and his team is working on modulation of climatic hazards with assured irrigation and drainage through more than 83 HP single phase tubules and drainage come research structures thereby addressing both floods and droughts in the same piece of land spread over 13 districts and 17 KVKs under RPCAU PUSA. And as someone who has been working with him, I know how relentlessly he has been working for the farmers and development of uh, agricultural practices. So over to you, sir, Dr. Jha. Thank you, Sudeshna. I am audible, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Your yes, slides are visible, sir. Yes, it is visible. Please make it zoom. Okay, sir. Yes, yes. Okay, Only sir. zoom. So, thank you, Sudeshna. Thank you, Dr. Hilder, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the, the NITM, the National Institute of Disaster Management, especially due to the efforts of Dr. Hilder, sir, for organizing this seminar. Uh, basically, this is a training for the scientists and especially for the students. And on behalf of the university, Dr. Pusa Central University, and as a nodal officer of the National India, India University Institutions Network, Professor Reduction, I welcome you all in this August session. So, my topic of today's discussion is drought, vulnerability, risk assessment, and mitigation measures in the general. So, should I start, sir? Yes, sir. So, 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 David, what yesterday, you might be knowing, my participants will be knowing that the COP27 is now going in Egypt, and COP26 was held last year in November 2021. And so, based on the proceedings of this COP26, I have got some level facts that out of 7.84 million people of the world, 2.3 billion people are uh, put in secure. And this figure is 29.3% of the world population. And again, this is very miserable that three, <laughs> of, 
350 million over this is this year is 350 million more as compared to the 2019 that is the covid year so this is very alarming situation and again uh, you see that 828 million people the world are suffering hunger in 2021 and this figure is again 46 million more as compared to 2020 150 million more as compared to 2019 and again and the nutritionally, nutritionally insecure population is 3.1 billion, not a full healthy diet in 2020. For this reason, there is a lot of situation. And this figure is 1, 1 billion higher as compared to 2020. So, since this figure is so high, maybe, might be that many of us, the elite classes, the rich people, maybe, a, maybe one of the such person that is not nutritionally. So again, the soil degradation is, is going down and the soil degradation is increasing. In the irrigated area, the per person is decreasing and green harvest area per person is decreasing. Again, forested area per person is decreasing. So these are the alarming facts that we must consider before we to So you see in the next slide, in the next slide, that in Africa, uh, the situation is more worse. In Asia also, the situation is more worse and around 55.5 percent of the people in Africa are relatively severely attacked by this hunger. Now coming to India. Now coming to India, the Indian population, the, uh, the Indian population by 2050 will be such that we have to produce 400 million tons of grains by 2050. And the present scenario is that the India's productivity is very, very less as compared to the world's productivity. And uh, uh, if we talk to about Bihar or the whole of the United States, the productivity of uh, rice, wheat, basal pulses crop, and uh, also maize, that is, that is very hard to know as compared to the, the, the best part of the world and the highest average of the world. So keeping in the, this with this case, we can, this is not possible for us to afford the Indian population, particularly to by two zero five zero. So we will have to increase our target the productivity further. Now this is the scenario of uh, this uh, climate change. This is the impact of climate change or food production. This is just projected data, and by two zero seven zero, the productivity will be. Now. And now this is the data of this uh, economic survey of Bihar. And uh, we see that the productivity of most of the Kharif crops, particularly rice and Kharif maize, and again ragi, and again this uh, mesta and uh, chut, productivity, the compound agricultural growth rate, annual growth rate of these crops are reducing. And uh, the productivity of wheat. And uh, as, uh, and uh, this rabi maize is increasing, and that too, that that in rate of uh, the, uh, cause of this increase, maybe due to technical interventions. But one one major cause is that when rice not is flushed out, the wheat sowing is uh, early, and so it is uh, skipped through the terminal, by the terminal heat. So one of the, the reason of increasing productivity uh, is flushed out of the rice crops. But, uh, but again, this is not, uh, not good for the uh, farmers. Now, this is the climatic variability and extreme weather conditions of India. India is observing since 1998, we have seen it. So, see this, this is a report of the Subaru set. And we see that uh, most of the year, we are having any climatic condition, extreme drought is there, and the tsunami is there. And Cold wave, hot wave, and everything is there. So India, Indian condition will always think from these kind of extremes. Now this is the all India monsoon variability over the years. So you see, this is a very, very big data from one eight seven zero to two zero two zero, and we see there most of these the red line as you see, and this is a drought condition we have observed, and again the blue condition, blue lines over uh, that is going down, going going up. Is affected by floods. Most of the year, we are observing either flood or drought or a factor or, or uh, this, uh, other other climate change. So uh, this is this is again a very important thing that we have uh, due to climatic calamities and natural disasters, our our production system is 
affected as well as the animals and wildlife is also being affected. So this is just that I have taken this report from this uh, NIT uh, due to uh, climate change and this is natural disasters. 9.8 billion out of which the loss is uh, annually occurring to India uh, and out of, out of this 7 billion dollars is due to floods. So this is based on the reports of global and uh, global agriculture. Now, the situation with the flood and water logging, the 113 million people of India, so almost 9% of the total population is affected by flood and water logging every year. And this is 11.6 million hectare uh, in India is uh, suffering from perennial or seasonal water logging. And in Eastern India, the major problems are due to river, river system, cyclone systems, floods and floods. In Bihar, uh, and uh, you, know, you can say in the whole of the negative plains, water logging is due to uh, the major rivers coming from Nepal. And, and in Bihar, around 8 million hectares are flushed out every year due to flood. Out of the 57 uh, uh, total flood area of the country, 7% area belongs to Bihar. And out of, out of this, 76% area is in the north of Bihar. And uh, again, the 17% of the total flood affected area in the country is in Bihar. And, and out of the out of 38 districts, 28 districts are always flood affected. So uh, in, in North Bihar, 76% of the land, land uh, you can say, two, uh, two thirds of the land is flood. Now this is the same figure, and almost all we see from 2008 to 2019 and 20 were also flooded affected. So these one of the districts that are flooded affected here, and the 76 of the geographical area is of the Bihar is flood affected. And this this is the uh, this is the uh, you can say this is one day uh, maximum extreme rainfall. So this is also when people you know, we are saying that rainfall is decreasing, uh, but uh, but this is extreme. Uh, Rainfall more than 60% rainfall is in, in one day. We can say it's extreme rainfall. So more than 75% number of these. This is the number from 1990 to 2019 average year. And so these you know, these number are very high. That means we are, we are having extreme weather conditions. Extreme one day uh, event is very very peculiar. And so you see the situation. The crop are crops are being damaged. First you see you see the flash flood. Due to, due to this river. The second, there is no rainfall in that this season. Uh, still, the cuckoo beads are being damaged due to, due to the river, flood in the river. And again, this uh, in the third year, this is a chord land, but stagnant water is you see the rice crop is damaged, and this is the river due to the flood, flood river uh, crop is being damaged in full swing. So, based on the series, surplus of water, there, there, there is surplus water, you can say, but uh, but not in all uh, areas and all districts. So based on this assessment, we can add uh, our cropping system. We can change our cropping system, and we have done. We have done it, and I have shown a few slides that we have just how we have achieved. So now, what is drought? And since we have to discuss drought and flood, will be uh, 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 will be dealing deal dealt with by our uh, local director research sir. So today I will be uh, con concentrating to the floods and droughts only. So if this is a period of insufficient rainfall or low rains over an extended period of time, creating soil moisture deficit and hydrological imbalances. So there are several causes and every cause is a reason also you can say, the cause is the effect also you can say. So low rainfall is the cause and low due to these low water charges in the air and low water loading of water temperatures. Again, low late onset of monsoon is one of the reasons. So late transport planting of paddy and late transporting of paddy affects the late sowing of wheat. And so both the crops, paddy and wheat, both are affected. One is by two drought and other, other two get the disturbed the wheat. Now, failure of the husk nakchat. Husk nakchat is coming in October last. You can say this is the last uh, um, nakchat where rainfall occurs in India and uh, in Bihar. And, uh, and, uh, uh, fate of this Ravi cross depends upon the rain, uh, onset of this first uh, nakshat. So late sowing, if, if this, that, that this rainfall uh, is not there, uh, the, the fate of Ravi crops is at a stake, and late, there is a late sowing of Ravi crops, and this sowing uh, irrigation is a must. So again, uh, this is uh, adding uh, 
income at adding this uh, uh, cost of cultivation to the farms. Again, normal onset of monsoon followed by prolonged breaks. So in this condition, then most of the crops are dry and, uh, and uh, only life saving irrigations can save. So we have just tried to life saving irrigation so in our projects. Now, long days in long dry spells, and early withdrawal is also one of the cause. And so, low efficiency of applied fertilizers here and poor growth and development of it. Again, moisture stress is a problem. And so, the non leaching of soil and soils and selling to the is a problem. And again, intensive rainfall. So, this brings flood hazard in our same situation. You can say the same thing, uh, same situation. So, now this is a uh, again. Rates in annual rainfall, and you see that the average rainfall of Bihar has gone down from 1146 to 848 in the last years. And the North Bihar, the North Bihar districts are generally, it is generally observed that North Bihar, North Bihar districts are flood prone, and South Bihar districts are uh, drought prone districts. But this is not so. You see, the most of the North Bihar districts are now there is decreasing trend in rainfall and increasing trend in the South Bihar. So. So the, the situation is just worse now. Now this is the drought risk analysis in Bihar. So you see it is 30 years average and 10 years average rainfall. In, uh, and we see that the 10 years average is always lesser than the 30 years average. So there is a rainfall is decreasing. Again, the, the uh, average number of dry days are increasing. So 10, the, you know, 10 decades are here. We yeah, have just shown this slide. So 10 years average is there, and number of dry days are increasing day by day. And 30, out of 38 districts, 38, 33 districts are uh, under drought heat conditions. So one time I am saying that almost all districts are flood affected. The second time I am going, I'm saying that, that most of the districts are drought affected. The fact is that same district, same land situation, same field, and same year also you can say, and same crop you can say, both flood affected and drought affected. So 30, 33% of state receives less than 750 annual unit rainfall, making the southern part of Bihar vulnerable to drop. And even in even 35% north Bihar districts, northeastern part of the district, Bihar are receiving annual rainfall less than 25%. And I'm facing drought in every years. Now, now there are three types of droughts: meteorological droughts, hydrological droughts, and agricultural droughts. So the, when we receive rainfall less than 25 percent, when it's in deficit, deficit, then it is called mild, and 26 to 30 percent when variation deficit, then it is called moderate, and 50 percent, more than 50 percent is called severe. And uh, in hydrological drought, drought, we can see when hydrological sources like streams, rivers, reservoirs, lakes, ponds, and dry are drier, non water temperature swings and falls, then it is called hydrological drought. So it is also happening in Bihar and in the northern states. And again, agricultural drought when soil moisture is insufficient to meet the water requirement of the crops, crops fail to support the normal crop growth, then it is called agricultural drought. And again, this is another definition a period of three consecutive weeks, which is rare for less than half of the normal, then you can see this. Now, uh, the, the, the type of there are three types of agricultural droughts early season drought, mid season drought, and late season drought. One alarming situation is again the, in the most of the Kharif season, one most Kharif months like in July, August, and September, you see that the number of dry spells are increasing. And from past few um, years, this is happening that the number of dry days are increasing. But in June, you say where the, the, there is no monsoon, the number of dry days are, are decreasing. That means more monsoon is shifting towards June. And uh, this is again uh, based on the, the precipitation index we have calculated how how flood is how drought is affecting our air condition. So the districts that are uh, that are conventionally called uh, flood prone districts like Dharbanga, Madhubani, and Sivar, Rajapatun, these districts are made in uh, again this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, Adipura and Kishanga and Subal. These districts are generally flood affected districts. But here the precipitation index. Observed by our scientists, we say we can say that they, these districts are um, now moderately dry to severely dry, dry districts. Now, we, uh, based on this uh, this uh, uh, result, we can say most of the districts of Bihar, uh, 
We are under the dry subjugate condition, wet subjugate condition, and in semi arid condition. And uh, in very few districts are now in wet subjugate. Again, based on the water deficit pattern, we can we can uh, uh, we can change our cropping system and cropping intensity and cropping price of the crops. We can change based on this uh, water deficit and water. And surplus patterns, and in the, in the next, in the last three, four years, when climate is a little bit wrong, we are dealing with, uh, we have just etched our properties uh, and target. So, you can see the drought during the same past. When we are talking about flood, there is always flood, and when we are discussing with this drought, we see that that that. From 2005 to 2019, only three years, 2007, 2008, and 2011, the rainfall was more than average, more than normal. And so most of the year, we are, we are seeing, again, 2020 and 2022, uh, rainfall was more, more than uh, 150% of the normal. So you see that here, that most of the year, most of the year, we see drought like condition, and both crops, rice, was damaged either in any stage of the growth and in initial state or in the final state. So some scientists are of the view. Some scientists are of the view that the rice crops should be dropped and uh, maize alternative crops like maize or soybean or peas and pea can be taken in that year. But but they, 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 uh, in lesser rainfall or drought condition is a, is a problem. Or of course, it is a problem, but not a, such a big problem. Then the problem of uncertainty is there. Uncertainty means we cannot sure, uh, we are not sure where this year will be a drought year or flood year. So you see in 2020-2021, the, the rainfall was more than 150% and 200%. But in again, to the, the, the year that is, uh, uh, that is, we are observing in 2020, the rainfall was just half of the world. So, we cannot uh, say uh, very surely which crops should be taken. And so, we, uh, in nuts and in seeds, we have the fragile ecosystem, but in both, and, both flood and drought, the same way. So, uh, this is a very peculiar situation. Dry rains and rainfall during the Kharif, this October. For rain, I am just saying this, uh, said in earlier slides that for Hathya Nakshatra, the rainfall is not there from last few years. But here, in this uh, tour, see there was a 359 millimeter of rainfall as against 75 millimeter of normal rainfall of the And on that, that too, in only six days of rainy days. So, uh, and uh, uh, so most of the crops. Uh, Was very, very abnormally during the rainfall, the rainy season. And so, in the last stage, we are harvesting the state. We just the crop is harvested, and there, for, for after harvesting, the crop is there. This crop is better harvested this year. Uh, so, uh, again, the, in the last uh, this, uh, this picture, you see the cropping of the plant. This is, a, this is actually an ITK, indigenous uh, technology knowledge adopted by farmers and some farmers of sugarcane adopt this process. So in districts like Dharvanga and Madhubati, they just practice cropping of the plants so that the, the, the uh, plants will get lost plants can withstand flood and anyhow what could be harvested at least from for the farm. Now this is this, this is some drought and floods the same thing in the same season. So maybe the rice be affected in the same season by flood in the earlier state and drought in the last later state or the drought in the earlier state or the flood in the later later state. So this is the, just a, the dry scale of this Greek uh, 2015. And also you see that uh, the rainfall is very eager in, in uh, particularly in July and again uh, August there was a complete drought and September also was a complete drought. And now again, temperature is also one of the factors. So generally in global warming sense, we say that the temperature is increasing, temperature is increasing, we always say, but in Bihar conditions, say the maximum temperature is very not so significant, increasing, of course it is increasing, 
but the rate, rate of increase is not so significant. But the minimum temperature, the night temperature, is very insignificant, significantly increasing. And you know, most of the pollination and fertilization activities are done in the night. So, due to warming in the warming trend in the night, the, the productivity of most of the crops, in the rubby crops, is. And you see there water logging delays, which seems, so there are four situations. The last slide you see there is flood and water will receive when we see lower lows, and in, in the last uh, in the second in, in this slide, in this slide, we are seeing that rice is there, but uh, but it will again the uh, rice will be a fit of rice is unsecure, it is unsafe, but again it will again uh, delay the wheat sowing. And in the uh, in the uh, this, this, this one crop is very uh, rice is very good. But it since it's the long duration rise, it will again compel the wheat reverse to go wheat. And in the first slide, the wheat har rice harvesting has been done in well in time by the end of the tour, as per our program, as per our climate resistance program. But still, water logging is there. I mean, you cannot sow uh, wheat in time. So, all the situations, all the situations, which say is being delayed, and it, again, it will be going to affect it by um, going to by the terminal heat. So this is again uh, this basic data the, for uh, having higher productivity of uh, more than 40 meters. If you want to have higher productivity, this much of rainfall temperature range should be there. So we cannot control the temperature of the environment, but of course we can change the the sowing window of the wheat crop and adjust the temperature according to the crop requirement. And again, when wheat is sown late, the duration of rice and sand hours is ticking is in, 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 uh, in later months. During that HOT period, the, the rice and sand hours is delayed. Oh, sorry, it is reduced. And due to this, due to this, uh, uh, the traffic grains, number of traffic grains and number of unfertilized grains is, has, is increasing, has increased, and uh, the productivity is. In this intervention of decline interventions, and we see here two crops of same variety, same which is there, same variety is there, same same everything is here, rent situation is the same, but one is so showing late and other is happening later, late in the later stage. So naturally, the, for the second crop will be harvested very in time, and the first one will be is terminal. And now for this. We have this uh, um, the project, our project enhancing the productivity of rice food cooking system to assure irrigation and time issue. So there are two components: assure irrigation and time issue. Because when we are we are locating the farmers to go for time sowing, there must be some irrigation resources. So you have a short chief signal for students uh, to them. And again, time sowing is also very important. So assure irrigation, time sowing, and uh, and uh, rice is mostly affected by dry as you know, and which is affected by turbidity. So uh, have modulated modulation, modulation of drought and and uh, this uh, heat uh, so both through uh, through through combination of soil irrigation and water harvesting structures. So we have uh, soil irrigation through three pieces of vegetables or five inch solar trees, and the amount of water that has been pumped up through bore wells uh, is replaced by two equal amount of artificial groundwater recharge system and pond water will be drained out in time. Giving a score for time sowing of wheat. So here we see, uh, uh, here we see that the through a sow irrigation, we can achieve and time sowing, we could achieve a yield target of 5.21 ton per hectare in rice and 4.9 ton of wheat. So overall, the productivity of 10 tons per hectare in 2020 and 2020. And this is the system productivity of different districts. So, as as I had already told in the initial introduction, that we are we are dealing with all seventeen districts of India, all, all in a north, northern Bihar and all through, through our territories. So, you see, all districts, almost all districts, we have achieved the target of ten tons per hectare. Now, this is uh, some information about the what is three hectares per so this is this uh, discharge is five to six liters per hour and uh, and uh, per so sorry per second and uh, it's common to get five to six hectare per hectare and running cost is very less you know, one to two rupees per uh, per hour you can say and uh, the, the cost of irrigation is very 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 cheaper and uh, again uh, in, as compared to the diesel pump say 
to where four to five cubic centimeter of water is discharged. Then we can again this is a discharge structure. Discharge structure, artificial groundwater discharge structure, and, uh, basically very important for the chord lands and the uh, tar lands or again gear lands where water uh, is there, so we can install it and uh, water water will be drained very good time. So this is the figure uh, what we generated during the at 7 a.m. this figure, and again this is the at 6 p.m. So all whole whole water was drained through this charge structure. And uh, again, this uh, is a village approach we have done. Uh, so uh, this is the chord land actually. And from last 25 years, the farmers were not doing any crop into water logging. Uh, but when this uh, charge structure charge system was installed, the crop could be taken. This is this is actually a perennial wheat, you can say. And uh, this is also perennial wheat. And uh, due to this uh, charge structure, water was drained well in time, and then wheat crop could be seen. Farmers are so happy that in uh, 25 years history, make wheat as a crop in this area. This is the means of this. And again, this is what we, uh, Bihar is a, uh, Bihar is a waterlogged area, and uh, well, the, the uh, major part of India is again, Gira land, Hav land is there, Tal land is there, Chal land is there. So there are different types of land situations. All affected on water layer. So the, you have just uh, uh, chalked out the plan when water, depending upon the water season patterns, so when water, and again, introduction of the solar put uh, so, mounted solar irrigation system. So it just introduced in this water receipts in, water receipts in September, uh, that is, any, any vegetable crops can be taken, in water receipts in October, any, any ruby crops can be taken. And the one also ruby crops can be taken in December. Late from wheat and maize can be taken if it is a uh, receipts in January. Then summer vegetables and green crop. And in the lower side, lower area, the the solar solar uh, the boat mounted solar irrigation system will be there, and they, that will be uh, irrigating the upper area, the poor area where the crops are being grown, and the lower area the water. So in, in the water will be in the water, and it will to that water the uh, the upper side of the crops that is filled and in. So this is the solar irrigation system developed at our, at our university. There are three systems: solar tree. You can you can add, you can plant anywhere in Hav area, in Chol area, in Pine Hills. So one peculiar situation was that the, the, the due to due to this uh, flood, once the solar tree was damaged, but again the the, the tube, tube light the, 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 the light system that was. Uh, Attached to this solar stream was was working in that condition also. So this was the people's situation, not only. So this is again Taylor, Taylor mounted solar irrigation system, and this is boat mounted solar system. So in the riverine beds, the water is everywhere. You must be knowing this fact: water, water everywhere, not a drop of any water. So there is water is there, but that farmers can know to use that water, the river water, for its flood, for flood irrigation system. So this thing. Put mounted solar irrigation system and uh, it gave those areas, the areas and tar areas, and again this. Uh, so you see here how how the crop is how the crop is being uh, irrigated by solar tree and solar roots. Now also this is the Dhar area. You see the good bits are grown in the the Bhagwati river bed, and so then we see the crop in the solar mountain. And again, uh, based on this flood, uh, when flood comes, you have just designed three uh, cropping systems here. So you know that, that maize is not a suitable crop for for, for where water is uh, water logging is there. We cannot understand the crop uh, water logging for one day, two, three days. But uh, still, we are advocating maize because maize has multi purposes. And uh, when flood comes in July and August, so maize and sorghum both uh, can be used for science purpose. Uh, green water because when flood is, flood is there and the acute flood is there, government is supporting the uh, the people uh, through their their distribution system, public distribution system, the flood affected areas. But they do not do any uh, such measures for the for the animals. So for animals, we have to this major sort of can be silence can be given to the flood affected areas that that season. And also, when flood comes to September, then more maize can be. Uh, sell sold through cops. 
and go with the diseases fetching more prices as compared to the fence. And so if there is no flood, then the grains and can be used as base can be used as grains harvested. So these are the three systems. Now again, this is the case history of the history of uh, the districts where a crop was sown. I, I I just uh, I through this project I'm just advocating that both the crops, rice and wheat, should be transplanted or sown in a the time uh, time frame so that is the, the appropriate time. So when this uh, crop rice crop was made uh, sown in time, so and again the flood came and the, the whole crop was damaged. It, it was, uh, not damaged, but summers for for 15 days interval, and when water receives, crop came out and they survived and survived, and uh, again the highest in the area in UK. So uh, it was only because crop was well, it was sold well in time. If the crop was still at the later stage, then it must be, must have been damaged. And again, these are the interventions of Vikra running in the different communities to us. So uh, these are the interventions. So uh, the additional water water channel structure, innovation of old water ponds and uh, of the, and uh, both natural and uh, artificial ponds were renovated. And uh, you see uh, how this, uh, 63 acres of hectares of land was put under a soil education and life saving is was built in crops. So you see uh, due to this uh, fuel efficiency of pumps was increased and the groundwater recharge was Higher by 2.5 feet as compared to 2.1. And uh, again, the discharge of two wells was increased, and the saving was like saving or uh, saving out in time of the get of creation. Again, the cropping intensity was increased by 60% in the assured irrigation in life saving emission. And additional crop was can be, could be taken like diesel and any or any of these two crops. Green down can be taken. Now again, the drainage system, the, the, in the, the tall area of the river banks, the, the water comes and uh, then blocked, uh, uh, and so the area is flooded. So due to the intervention of the inlet channel of the river, we have 60 hectares of land from flood and 31 quintals of animal harvest. And again, the two bills were also relocated. And two bills, uh, two, sorry, uh, sorry, bills, bills relocated. This project, and we see 2.5 tiers of rain due to this wells to be made under the soil. And the, 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 the major achievement of this uh, project was that the greatest achievement, you can say, government of Bihar announced this is a organic program, and this uh, climate resilient agriculture program is one of them. But again, renovation of bonds and uh, Wells and so these are all being done by the Ministry of Water Resources and this Ukra project is a program through the Ministry of Energy. So this is a bit better given that government our government should understand our position and so again this is the tank seed application. So when we are in the rotating the old water harvest charge structures or ponds for the tank seed that was applied to the uh, to the main fields and then the productivity of that crop was that, that field was increased, water was increased, was increased, crops could be stable crops could be taken. And then this so in situ wells more generation and land level. So land leveling is one of the major components when you are doing the farmers. And so after leveling of the fields, uh, uh, stable crops could be taken. And uh, again, you will see these are leveling rice field also uh, productivity could be is by, by that means the number of irrigations was reduced and productivity was increased by 17 percent as against the normal yield. So again, this is sort of one of the interventions one we make the effort that so uh, it is it was actually a conventional practice, not in a modern practice. The one making one effort that was done by the farmers, but in in the, in these years, in the recent years, one making one breaking is a is in practice. And so farmers are now not taking making months because of the, the scarcity of the land resources. So, but again, we are just advocating to create the bank months, uh, raise the bank months before. So again, this is a tall area. You can say sorry, this is a 
Jira area. area, and in Jira area, the land is uh, sandy, and they are, they are not playing. That is, there is a lot of tables are there in this. So, uh, so flood irrigation is not possible there. And crop are being sown. But due to this the high temperature and the sandy soil, the seeds are being uh, seedlings and the seedlings are then the also the germinated saplings, you can say they are drier. And so we have just clicked the uh, also one you can say ITK, the land was uh, made uh, one side higher from the from the western side, the, the land was land was made some higher and in the in the in the ditches, in the pits, you can say, the crop was sown, and that uh, this irrigation could be possible through this much development, but growing is not possible. So, could the crop be survived through the heat tolerance also and germination? Well. So, now this, again, this is a 5% area mostly practiced in the, uh, in the southern Bihar, southern, southern part of Bihar of Jharkhand, you can say, but in northern Bihar, since flood is very, very common, so if you, uh, if you, you, Five percent area for this uh, water harvesting structure. Uh, in the flood of it, in, when flood comes, the, the whole land will be uh, will be flooded, and then there will be there will be chances of uh, chances of uh, that means you can say any person or animal can can go in this region. So just we are not uh, for for the ocean purpose we have done, but not for in, in the larger scale are not adopting. But in South Bihar and Jharkhand is very popular. Uh, this is a five percent area in all, each plot. We are getting uh, this pond. Now, again, cleaning of the ponds was one of the bigger interventions, interventions. And the, uh, the, the water hyacinth that was harvested, that, that was used in the making of the and Again, this is a natural mulch. This is one of, one of the major interventions for the preservation of the soil and also for the of the moisture. And uh, this is, you see like, how this. Uh, and this is also micro irrigation, one of the factors that we can save water to increase the water by 30%, and reduction in under 20%. So water can be saved. Now, this is the alternative. Currently, we are also, we are, the people are very poor, many people are very poor, and they, they use the cow dung for burning purpose, for feed, cake purpose, and burn. So, one idea is carried in, in our mind. So, this uh, this uh, uh, cake can be used for for this uh, compost purpose. You know, cow dung can be used for compost purpose, and uh, the land should be free from this. Uh, that that water only capacity of that soil. It will increase, it will have increased, and uh, can get extra income from this. And again, this is in situ moisture. So, in sand, in, in sandy soils, there is sand dunes are there. And so, cuckoo bits are there. You, you see the farmers, the micro farmers are standing there. And uh, here, we, we, the thatches are there. This is normally thatches grow in the Lera lands. And we cut this, these thatches, and uh, they just uh, go in the, in the field. and. Uh, in this hatching water uh, is also saving, and uh, again, this is soil conservation is there, water conservation is there. Now, this is a uh, weight planting with wind breaks. So, weight planting is, is done, and there is a wind breaks. So you can use a uh, and as a wind breaks or any other crops, you can, any super bowl or any other crops. You can. And now we are just training the farmers irrigate the crop, not the soil. So in flood, so flood uh, like flood, flooding, the system of irrigation is flooding. So in flooding, you know, we do uh, flood irrigation with like uh, wheat also. But here we say that irrigate the crops as per demand of the crops. And, just, and there are different situations where we are just uh, uh, technologies for the uh, right side. This is a dhab area actually. This is a, the of the Khabra River. And clay soil is generally not found in near, nearby this is, uh, river. But uh, it is a peculiar situation where the farmer is going pointed, just sowing the transplanting in pointed hole. Again, this is a work going to the Indiana land catches. And this is the farmers are spreading the land in the wheat land, they say, sitting and this is the sitting. Uh, of wheat, and this is doubling of doubling of maize. And there no land preparation is required because water is there. Water is moist, and so you don't no, no time for 
flowing of the soil. So just they, they can develop in the, the soil and put the base seed and the productivity is very good, very good. And the, this farmer was was challenging me that your system, that the scientific system is, is not, uh, can not keep such a that our system, this dividing of place can be. This farmer challenging me. And it is a fact also, the productivity of the, this crop is very high. Now this is the dividing for crops of our tonic dividing crop. So and, uh, you see, you, you see this farmer, this is our SRF doing, doing the, the farmers and how this uh, taking soil moisture. And this is a climate engineering now. Different systems are there. This is DSR as compared to transplanted. This is drum seeder as compared to this transplanted. Transplanted uh, soil irrigation, without irrigation, irrigation, and so nutrient management, and fertility and drying, and water harvesting, and fish field bonding. Every intervention you have just put in one slide, and you see in each uh, in each intervention, we are just receiving uh, how higher in task. And again, this is the interventions Ravi. In Ravi, we have zero tillage, we have bed planted. It's community irrigation. Community irrigation is common in both the years, both, both the seasons. And again, this is nutrient management. So you see zero tillage versus conventional tillage 16.84% higher yield. In the bed planting, 19.6% higher yield. In community irrigation, 26.5% higher yield. And nutrient management, you see, between point three. This is the rest of the lines. This time, the same of crops is in zero tillage. Three tillage and dry. So this is one of the interventions are three tillage and dry. And uh, and uh, they're just installed in the farmer's field. This is three tillage and dry. This is a main way. This is a this is purchased one. This is a garden and by by our own. And and uh, due due to this one, uh, alternate tillage and dry system, farmers could save. Uh, to save water also, and also, also you see this. This is an actual basic science research done by our uh, scientist Aaron Bhagwan sir. The the, the today to yesterday's moderator. So this is this research has been done by our Dr. Aaron Bhagwan sir. And so you you see this is the when the, there is adequate moisture in the rice crop in the initial stage, then and if intertermal uh, drought comes, then the crop is the crop is being damaged. But when we, we, we do give a dry and wait alternatively to the crops, so when terminal drought comes, uh, comes the crop will survive. So this was a situation. See that critical aspect, but in, in this year, in 2020, the rainfall was very, very low, and the uh, dry space was very, very long to year. Crop was damaged very much, but uh, still the farmers could get a higher yield, and uh, comparably you can say, so we can see. Basic principle of alternative drying because nature has created this year as a regulatory drying. Now, this is an application of potassium uh, fertilizer, is also one of the major, major key points for fighting the fighting the drought. So, we, again, this is a, this, this right side is basic science research, and this is this is where I have applied in the farmers field, and we could see that how the application of potassium fertilizer save the uh, to save the crop crops under drought condition. And here is the water saving of water through different water financial techniques, KSR and labor planting. So this is the last the last thing you see bacteria and the effective meter of water that we could save our food or different intervals. Now this is alternative crops. So we are just advocating farmers to go for the Delays like not in and chain, but we are not advocating to go for this uh, season P or swearing. So swearing is also damaged when rainfall is unpredictable and, and can, can, but millets can survive. Millets can survive because, because nature of millets is more or less like, like rice crop. So rice crop as well as millets can survive. But then even so again, these are, these are the community effort, know the farmer to acquaint the farmers how we can uh, we can adapt the climate change and how we can mitigate the climate change. So farmers intervention is always there, and we we are through our capacity building program, through our uh, outreach program, through our different activities. We are just uh, so this is again our our uh, advisory system. So Dr. Sattar Sattar is also 
for the system. We are allocating the farmers to make the move for them get grow or not and get the crop. So like uh, particularly in the rabi crops in wheat, when there is a majority you know, stage, at least in the duffel uh, uh, that is when the, the crop is in the our scientists are daily allocating that go for irrigation. And the farmers, there is a heavy and uh, heavy uh, heavy wind is there at that time. So uh, farmers are in dilemma where to get from. So based on this, we can allocate the farmers. So this is again, again, uh, this uh, basic science research of our project. We are just uh, advocating, we are just giving alternate drought and uh, heat to the farmers in combination with heat and drought, heat and drought, and again individually. So the so the scientific uh, development needs. So now this is my last slide. With the increasing climate variability, the agricultural production is going to be more challenged, and the scaling of climate smart agriculture interventions are the need of the day for the nutritional food security. And government interventions needed in scaling up the soil irrigation to the efficient phase two years, and the soil irrigation through water harvesting and farm structures, and it's you know, and more community efforts needed for better adaptation is due the climate change and climate change associated. And alternate energy like solar trees, solar reports, and electric motor solar energy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Very beautiful and very meaningful, and a lot of information, informative, uh, informative lecture you have uh, provided. Starting, and you have highlighted that Bihar is having both flood as well as drought. In that condition, how it has to maintain the farmer, especially the farmer subject to produce the crop. But your university, a lot of uh, production, a lot of, in, uh, that, uh, lot of invention are made that uh, even for the, soil, the water uh, harvesting structures we have uh, done, where the, after 25 years, they have taken the crop. So a lot of inventions were there and say uh, that uh, even for solar power, they are using for the uh, pumping of water, all, all kinds of uh, that innovation work you have done to especially for the production of crops in that area. So the area which is more, more prone to flood due to the Nepal part and a lot of uh, rivers are coming from Nepal and it is giving that uh, flood also if the no rainfall is there in Bihar, but still the floods are taking place due to the certain more than seven or eight rivers which is coming from Nepal. And a lot of, I mean, uh, technology you have adopted, say that climate resident, climate resident crop also you have given uh, that during that uh, even drought and heat resistant crops also you have produced and you have given that idea how to make it. Overall, a very good presentation and a lot of benefits will be getting from the And let me see if any question is there. Sir, I could not find any questions so far in the chat box. So, if at all, then let you oh, know. No, sir, sir. I will, I will, I will uh, give answer to that. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot for the beautiful you, presentation. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Sudhasana, please conduct the session for the next speaker. He is ready. Dr. Arun is there? Yes. Arun, you are there. What I feel? Yes, sir. I am. So, please make it on your video sometime. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, beautiful face. <laughs> Hello. Hello, thank you, sir. Uh, and I want to thank Dr. Jha for his wonderful presentation. And now we move on forward to uh, Arun Kumar Verma for his presentation. And uh, I would like to give a brief introduction of uh, Arun Kumar Verma. He is presently working with Center for Mask. Uh, Congregation and Transport Related Disasters at National Institute of Disaster Management. He has joined NIDM in the year 2019 as a young professional. And prior to this, he has completed his master's degree in disaster management itself from the De Department of Geography, Punjab University, Chandigarh, and his, and his graduation degree in Geography Honors from University of Delhi. 
He also holds a postgraduate diploma in environment management. He has completed a study on comparative study of Kumbh Mela and HRBC of Rajiv Chowk Metro Station, New Delhi. So we are really excited to hear his talk and over to you, uh, Arun Kumar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thank I would like, uh, is I audible? Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, audible. Thank you. Thank you, Alder, sir, for giving me this opportunity to speak on a, such a wonderful topic. As Haldasar told me that I have to uh, take a lecture or a kind of a thing, so I think that uh, I will take a small session on the disaster management plan, that how we should make a disaster management plan for, we can say, university or we can say any institutional area. So I will give a brief about that, what is and how a disaster management plan is very important also. So we have uh, many ingredients that what are the techniques and the tool in which we are discussing. So I will share my presentation with you. I hope presentation is visible. Uh, no, it is to come, it is coming. Okay. Yes, it is there. Okay. So, the main theme of this presentation or topic is that the dm plan disaster management plan basic features and techniques for its formation and we can say tools so coming to the before describing the what is disaster and as i am thinking that you all know what is disaster so these are the six or eight words which are which are seen on the screen basic concepts we can say which comprises of a disaster hazard vulnerability risk preparedness, mitigation, response, and recovery. Friends, this is a, a scenario that, uh, and this is a class or this is a series of sessions where we are discussing about the expert related to the disaster management. So before coming to the disaster management plan, we should have a clear cut idea that what is disaster, what is hazard, what is vulnerability, and what is risk. On the second side, there is preparedness, mitigation, response, and recovery. Total, the, the thing, disaster management, the things, the, the a near and dear to the this disaster management cycle or we can say there are eight or four eight or ten words which are comprises of total the this dm plan or this di disaster management thing so if what is disaster disaster is in simple words you can say there are two types of disaster natural disaster or human induced disaster or we can say uh, man made disaster like uh, 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 like the terrorist attack bomb attack these are the things of the new net these the other things which are created by a human being or we can say man made but on the other hand natural disaster you are well aware that what are natural disaster like earthquake tsunami these are the major examples or the bigger examples that we have encountered a super cyclone 1999 which was a, a, in this 1990 it, uh, it damaged and it is recorded that approximately 12000 to 20000 people had died in india Bhuj earthquake is a very good example to understand the natural disasters. And I think a day, a two, three days back, we have uh, seen that tremors have been triggered in the Nepal, uh, Nepal with a Richter scale of 5.7. So these are the, some natural disasters. Hazards and disasters have a small, little, little bit, a small bit gap with that. What is the difference? That is, hazard is a potential damaging phenomena, that phenomena which has some capacity to destroy the things. So in the simple language, we can understand that hazard has a capacity to destroy the things. And when it destroy, that become a disaster. And what is vulnerability? Vulnerability is a kind of thing. There are four types of vulnerabilities, economic vulnerability, social vulnerability, and, and this is an environment vulnerability. What is the vulnerability? Vulnerability is kind of degree of loss that how, what, what are the terms of what terms we are get affected to any disaster like in terms of human being in terms of mankind in terms of uh, resources in terms of manpower or anything if for example to understand this thing if we are sitting in a simple room and a ceiling fell fall down then how who, who all are vulnerable vulnerable are only those people those are sitting just near to or near to the or the beside or just below the fan so vulnerability risk risk is in risk in terms of disaster management refer to the degree of loss or we can say the expected life loss how many people or how much damage can be occur to any uh, due to this any disaster so these are the four words another thing is 
these are the words which are preparedness mitigation response and recovery in which they are comprising of a disaster management cycle that what is disaster management cycle cycle means that we some if we are planning for do any work we have some plans like we have if we are going if we are making any trip to the shimla or we are making any trip to the udaipur if we are making trip to the kanyakumari so we have some plannings that we will woke up early morning in the 5 pm then we will book a cab then we will book a train then we will we have a airport and like these things so we have done a prepared planning for like that in disaster management we do we have to do a preparedness for to tackle any emergency or any natural calamity or any disaster in terms of man made or in terms of uh, this thing human induced or uh, natural disaster what we do in mitigation we to mitigate things we do means we have to uh, innovate our ideas in the coming slide we have a small like a pictorial diagram where we can easily understand the basic things in and what is response response is when we have coming to the third stage of disaster means second stage of disaster means first stage pre stage means when we are preparing for a disaster second is disaster occurred but after the disaster what we have to do we have to response that disaster response in the terms of we have to provide a adequate number of medical facilities adequate number of food packaging adequate number of water bottles and many things which are involving or which are created due to the natural disaster natural or a man made disaster and recovery recovery means we are trying to back to the normal position where we have started hindi mein agar hum baat kare isse samajhne ki to hum is prakar samajh sakte hain ki jahan se hum chale the where we have started usi position pe normal position pe aane ko hum recovery kahenge recovery kya hai ki ek we in we see in hindi ekdam se nahi ho sakti hai and if we see ki हमने कोई काम करना था वो आज के लिए हमने दस दिन का टारगेट रखा कि इतना तो जब भी कोई डिजास्टर रहता है व्हेन वी फेस एनी नेचुरल डिजास्टर और ह्यूमन ड्यूज डिजास्टर और एनी क्लैमिटी वी हैव टू सेट द पैरामीटर्स दैट इन इन दीज 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 डेज वी हैव टू डू दीज थिंग्स एंड वी विल ट्राई टू बैक टू नॉर्मल इन विच वी ऑल्सो गेट कम्पनसेशन फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया और स्टेट गवर्नमेंट आर ऑल्सो मेकिंग एफर्ट्स टू गिव कम्पनसेशन टू द पीपल फ्रॉम दिस presentation or from this diagram we can understand that if a man near to this this hill area is standing and this is tall or this is uh, this beggar is tall or border is fallen down so this border or this stone has a capacity which in terms of that it may damage to that particular man who is sitting just uh, who is standing near to the hill hill to hill area hindi mein mat baat kare to ye jo manushya khada hai is patthar ke paas itni capacity hai it has it, kind of a capacity which can destroy this man but other kya hai ki if we do prevention this is a hazard capacity jab hai maine bataya ki what is hazard hazard means when it has a capacity and what we do in prevention we do some mitigate options humne apni akal lagai we use our brain and we do mitigate things that we have stopped this thing on the top of the hill then we use like that we are here for a prevention we are here for the mitigation we are here for the preparedness coming to the coming to this uh, this uh, this uh, third, third stage of where we have to mitigate option that ye to daily this is the daily routine you know, that the from the top of the hill the they the border or the stone will fall down we have to make a permanent or we have to make a temporary arrangement to save ourselves so that particular man make some shelf like structure on him हिंदी में बात करें यहाँ पे तो ये इस मनुष्य ने अपने लिए अपना एक कवर किया इसने अपने लिए एक ऐसी चीजें बनाई कि मेरे को ये पत्थर तो रोज गिरने वाले हैं यहाँ पे बट वी हैव टू डू सम सम परमानेंट सॉल्यूशन फॉर दैट कि मैं अपनी जान बचा सकू ये पत्थरों का तो रोज का काम है ये तो गिरने ही गिरने हैं सो इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिजास्टर ये इसने अपना एक सोल्यूशन बनाया मिटिगेट किया मिटिगेशन कैसे किया उसने हो सकता है कहीं पे लेक्चर सीरीज सुनी हो सकता है इसने कुछ भी करा हो ये कुछ ट्रम्स कुछ भी हो सकते हैं बट कंक्लूजन इज दैट कि उसने अपने आप को मिटिगेट कर लिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ परमानेंट सॉल्यूशन लाइक इन नेक्स्ट स्टेज दैट इज प्रिपेयरनेस वेयर क्या कर रहे हैं कि हमने इस मनुष्य को पता था कि ये पत्थर गिर रहा है तो इसने क्या हुआ चिल्ला दिया तो ये भाग गया मीन इन दिस स्टेज दैट पर्टिकुलर मैन हैज सम कैपेसिटी मतलब ही और शी नो दैट वट हाउ वी कैन सेव द लाइफ ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर मैन हुई इज रनिंग सो ही स्टार्टेड शाउटिंग दैट प्लीज रन सो इन दिस स्टेज it will for for it save his life what in the disaster what happened this this will fallen down 
and this will may might be chances of they they might be chances of that he might get that or he may get hurted in leg or he may get it hurted on any part of a body so from first stage that is hazard when they this stone has capacity we coming to the last stage that is disaster in which we can make arrangements but we coming to the disaster so this is a basic simple difference between a hazard and the disaster that what when anything that has a capacity to destroy that is known as hazard but when it is implemented or the, the event has happened then it then it is known as disaster coming to the tools and techniques of a dm plan we will think that planning is a very important tool to understand or to assess the hazard risk vulnerability capacity in terms of reduce the risk why reduce the risk because in terms of disaster management we totally focusing at the major aim of disaster management is that we have to reduce the risk we have to make sure that minimum life loss the area the aim of disaster management is to reduce the life loss it is a main end so planning is a good so planning tool ki when we are making a disaster management why we are making a disaster management plan it should be understandable understandable that if somebody is coming or if somebody is interested or if somebody read out that particular plan he or she can easily understand that what this this area disaster management plan is saying so planning tool to assess the hazard risk vulnerability and capacity in order to reduce the risk that is thing ab need of disaster management plan why should we need a disaster management plan as we we have compared the first thing is that disaster management plan provide a preventive measures measures to reduce the harmful effects of a disaster management or to formulate a, we if we are sitting in, like i have given already given example that if we are traveling from one place to another plan we have certain plan we have certain plans to to uh, we when we are planning something we have certain plan that first step is that second step is like that like that so we make planning so for like like in case of a disaster management disaster management plan is also pre preventive measures because if we have a plan if we have any planning to do like if we are sitting in a in a auditorium or a seminar hall and we have a capacity of 100 people and suddenly one gate is choked so we don't have any alternative plan so so there might be a chances of a stampede but if we have a plan if we have any uh, this thing evacuation route demarcation on any wall of a uh, on any wall of a auditorium or the seminar room then we can save a life of a people so it is that is why it become very important and it also provide provide uh, it also provide you opportunities for many internal agencies to collaborate with one another if we are a fire services if we are a ddmas if we are a district disaster management authorities and we will work for a collaboratively then we can save more life and we will uh, give a productive or we can say we will give a fruitful uh, kind of thing to the our local areas people so that is why it become very important and provide uh, in the fourth point it is mentioned that provide time to minimize the waste response time with because in disaster management time become a very important time play a very important role because we say if some in incident occur at any place we say that these are the golden hours why we will say golden hours because if we save the people in time then it become a golden hour and might be chances that it may, she or me get admitted to the hospital and might and we in a some period of time it will it will come out from recovery in come out from the this danger in danger stage to the recovery mode and might be join his family back but if we take a time and it we if we doesn't have any planning if we don't have any resources then it will become very hectic position another thing is provide it also provides a assigned role to responsible to the important stakeholders in disaster management there are numbers of stakeholders because disaster management is a subject which not only work for a one stream it will work for a three or four time it will work in the numbers of stream because it include fire services it include medical aid it include food department it include fire uh, this uh, lightning it include electric department many inter agencies will work togetherly 
so it provide our specific specific role to the person for this different stockholders at a time of any emergency we should not contact to the one in only one agency because in a once it is written when it is mentioned in a dm disaster management plan of any when it might be a disaster management plan of university might be a plan of any building might be a plan of a department but when it is mentioned in a department so the concerned department concerned stakeholders will be get actively act, active and they will work collectively provide time to right to information reaches to right person if we doesn't have any planning to disaster management then at a time of emergency if we if we kind of example hindi mein agar hum baat kare yahan se samjhe ki hame chahiye tha ki hame jo chabiyan hai jo main door hai uski hamare paas chaukidar ke paas honi chahiye thi but if chaukidar is sitting in another building or chaukidar is on the rest mode or chaukidar is on the uh, in we can say ki ghar mein baithe hain to who will be responsible so it provide a responsibilities to a right person ki ye aadmi hai this particular man has a right this particular woman has a right we should concern only him or her at that particular time and provide a space to maximum benefit to the needy provide time to thinking no to panic and it provide also new ideas to deal because as young minds young people are doing it on this disaster management planning or many people are doing disaster management course in the country so they are also provide young minds young mind will when they young mind will think about the new ideas new things then they can implement it into the mock drills when mock drills conducted in the country and uh, there are two three agencies which provide and ndrf is a very good source of uh, conducting mock drills and people can invite the people from ndrf and they can conduct it so they will do a live demonstration they will provide you a clear cut situation that this is a when there is a panic situation you can call them there are you can call them you can take any help from them and while making a disaster management plan you should also include a senior authorities like the police personnel fire personnel they will they will assess they will guide you in a proper manner dm plan there are dm plan comprises of a mitigation plan mitigation plan response plan media plan and evacuation plan there are substitute of there are kind of a sub chapters of a disaster management plan because we have to make a mitigation plan what is mitigation plan when we are making a planning to do uh while making a disaster management plan we are making a suppose we are making a plan of a uh, this uh, central university central university bihar samastipur they are disaster management plan so we should have a mitigation plan we should have a response plan if we face any difficulty or any calamity in the on the in the campus or of the near to the campus what should be the responsible who will who will contact firstly how we will do response to that particular disaster so this will be comprises in the response plan media plan means what kind of a news or what kind of a uh, what kind of a information we would like to share with the general public because when we do when we face any natural calamity we just come with a panic situation and in panic situation some sometime it is observed that the parental situation the concern of the parents concern of the relatives become very high so at that time if media play a, if media play concern media play important role it will give a exact and the related information na ki kuch bhi bol de ki media mein yahan itni aag lagi hai yahan itne log dabe ja rahe hain yahan idhar is tarah ki situation na create ho to media ka bhi ek planning honi chahiye disaster management plan ke hisab se evacuation plan means if disaster occur and we are doing a response we are doing any response response activity is going on and we people doesn't have any evacuation route or any evacuation demarcation then it become very problem problematic for the response response team those who are doing responding activities because if first responder teams are coming to the any spot of a natural calamity or a man made calamity they should have a idea in like in in case of a incident response system irs what we do what we teach in the irs courses that the concern authorities those who are coming from the outside in the terms of help in the manpower or from the rest of the world those people are coming they should get a clear cut that this is a present situation we are here and we have to evacuate people or we have to give response to the people in that particular area so we should give a evacuation map or we should give a proper demarcation that these are the plain these are the ways where we can get enter so dm plan should also comprising of a evacuation map 
another thing is that response uh, content of dm plan we should content content of dm plan it may vary from the uh, this uh, the plan from whom we are making if we are making a university if we are making of a department if we are making of our ministries of government of india government of states respective states so we should concern these things that response what are the sobs of a response who this ways of is sobs of a response will comprise that what who will be the nodal officer in which situation if we are making a plan of a dm dm plan of a samastipur university central university we should demarcate that our vice chancellor sir or ma'am should be a nodal officer for this this program this calamity if occur then he will activate a in kind of a incident response team that who will be the second boss who will commanding to the people so that should be comprising in the sobs who will who will responsible for the relief who will be doing the reconstruction work in i am saying only in the terms of samastipur university thing but it will comprising at a natural uh, this uh, national level also there are many agencies who will provide a relief thing that ndrf ndrf is a totally a draft one this deput and deputation force who is working for the response part of the only we have seen in any natural calamity in india we will call ndrf because ndrf people are very dedicatedly working in the field of response and this is very a uh, good source of responsible teams and now presently in every state we have uh, and, and like ndrf we have create and government of india or government is respective government has created sdrf state disaster response forces like ndrf national disaster response force they are very trained people they if you call them for a mock drill if you call them for any seminar they will come and they will teach you or they will uh, they will provide you appropriate information what should what should we do in the response and how we should do response today at an idm an idm itself campus we have a team of ndrf today they are they are showing and they are doing a demonstration of all how we will pull or how we will lift the people if in case of emergency so these are the things things and we also have to make a budget because budget allocation things is very important if we if we doesn't have any budget to a dm plan or any budget to any disaster calamity we should make appropriate arrangement of a budget in case of any sudden events or in case of any natural calamity we will note in a position that we should describe that how how we can manage the things in a disaster how we can manage the disaster because we don't have budget so we should allocate budget also this is a, another chapter of comprising of a dm plan another is risk hazard risk vulnerability analysis this is also known as hrvc what we do in hrvc we will do firstly we will observe that this is the train uh, this is the train of a area this is a geographical condition of area geographical condition if the geographical conditions are okay it, suppose if we are in a bihar bihar is a state where, which every year encounter with a many flood in the rainy season or just near to the rainy seasons it encounter many floods in the country we are we have observed and seen that major flooding areas are near to the gangetic plains and in which bihar is also a part or due to the excess water from the brahmaputra river side we encounter floods in the north and east part of a country so what we do we have seen that the conditions are the conditions are these and these are the natural natural calamities what is hazard as i earlier told you hazard is a potential damaging capacity so we have seen or we have observed that this is a death this is a hazard which come every year so we should make we have to make arrangements to deal with it we have to make practice like that in case of uh, flooding we will follow these things we will follow these steps and we will encounter we will help in uh, the people we should evacuate in term evacuate before the rainy season or like uh, when the concerned authority like imd given early warning that this state is suffering uh, maybe this much of water this may, this much of water should be uh, in the river we are and dam this dam people are also uh, send send says that this much of cusic water is released from the dam so so we should aware administration so administration give a clear cut guidance so we should focusly observe that these are the number of hazards which can 
hazards may be of numbers of five to the we we see the geographical conditions of a country so we should make these things and we should also focus who are the vulnerable vulnerability care what is the vulnerability vulnerability in terms of man or vulnerability in terms of property vulnerability in terms of man made things new natural things so we should observe jab humne pehla step where we have already covered these are the number of hazards then coming to the vulnerability ki is area mein in if we of making a plan of a samastipur university we should consider this this num these number of students are coming daily to the university and itne log yahan pe reside kar rahe hain already hostels mein rehte hain ya fir apne pgs mein rehte hain we should know exact number ki itne log hain because in time of any emergency if i give example suppose in terms of uh, uh, if we encounter in a department of geography we face fire incidents and if we doesn't know the exact number of department people if we exact know the number of faculties if we know doesn't know any information to the related to the student how we can say that how many people are outside the department and how many are in the inside so that give that hrvc give you a clear cut observation because when we have listed the disaster we also have to list it the total vulnerability in terms of man made things uh, sorry in terms of man power those who are working i am giving example continuously giving example of a university because we can consider a, we can take a example of a department ki department ke andar agar 100 bacche the 100 mein se 20 bahar hain to 80 andar hai iska simple sa matlab ye hai to kya hum jab bhi koi responder aayega fire services wale aayenge ndrf ke team aayenge kam se kam we can say that these number of students are inside the campus or inside the department we have to evacuate them so this give a hrvc and like this which give a hrvc and v means vulnerability h means risk uh, this hazard r means risk risk kitna hai how many people how many people are in the danger situation how many people affected kitna life loss ho sakta hai hame and another thing is that capacity hrvc capacity means hamari kya capacities hai what are the capacities of our department what are the capacities of our university because yes we are we uh, if we have joined 100 or 200 people have joined this particular webinar or, or this uh, series of say, uh, sessions in training program now we are somehow become uh, somehow have some knowledge related to disaster management that what can we do in case of how can we save our life but if we doesn't know any hazard we doesn't know any things and we didn't attend any mock drill program then it is become a very serious problem to our department also and university also so we are if we have attending any disaster management uh, training or any program so we become a kind of a capacity to the department or capacity to the university in terms of manpower because jab tak ki first responder aa rahe hain jab tak ki fire services aa rahi hain fire services aa rahi hai police aa rahi hai वहां पे एज अ फर्स्ट रिस्पॉन्डर वी हैव टू बिहेव वी हैव टू डू वी हैव टू हेल्प द पीपल विद दोस हु आर इन द नीडी वी कैन नॉट से कि भाई वी डजंट हैव एनी नॉलेज सो वी कैन वी वी विल नॉट हेल्प एनीथिंग वी हैव टू डू बिकॉज़ वी हैव अटेंडेड अ कोर्स ऑफ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट वी नो डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट वी नो व्हाट इज हजार्ड वी नो व्हाट इज वल्नेबिलिटी एंड हाउ वी कैन से ये आई एम नॉट सेइंग कि वी वी आर इन द एक्सट्रीम लेवल कि वी इफ वी हैव अटेंडेड अ सेमिनार और ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम वी आर ऑन द टॉप नो but somehow we know something about disaster so that is known as a capacity of a disaster management disaster management uh, so this is a thing another thing is while making a, a plan we should also see the possible hazards what we do in uh, hi uh, this hrvc we should state identification of the all possible hazard in the state prone to it means we have to list down in case of in, in if we are taking example of a department we have to list down the possible hazard possible hazard in in like that falling uh, seal uh, this ceiling for ceiling for fall down of ceiling fan ceiling problems of the roof ceiling problems if we have any or if it doesn't have any fire extinguisher this is also a hazard because in terms of if we go to fire short circuit things so these are the these are numbers of things which we can listed in the state hazard profile but if we are considering the department profile only so so we should also make establish the most damaging hazard kaun sa sabse kiski sabse zyada frequency hai hamare department mein hai hamari university mein hone wali jaise ki i have already give you example that bihar encounter many flood situation in a year 
सो उनकी मैग्नीट्यूड वी शुड ऑब्जर्व द हिस्ट्री वी शुड फ्रिक्वेंसली फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑब्जर्व द हिस्ट्री ऑल्सो दट हाउ फ्रिक्वेंट दिस डिजास्टर अकर्ड and how many people are be damaged or how many people are be affected by last year by this flood situation then we will come to the conclusion ki yes ye situation thi we have done a hrvc we have done we have listed out the hazards possible hazards these are the number of possible thing these are the people these are the number of people those who are on the market demarcation of a engine kind of a danger in the danger is in the danger stages these are our capacity we have resources we have resources not in terms of manpower i am saying resources in terms of like fire services like police medical aid hospitals medical ambulances these are our resources we should make a proper demarcation of these things another thing risk profile i already discussed with you that what is hrvc so i am not giving a clear cut risk is a probability of stacking identification who and what area risk kahan pe hoga risk ek area mein hoga risk kisko hoga risk people ko hoga and infrastructure ko hoga these are the things and vulnerability analysis vulnerability i totally already done uh, sell that vulnerability are two, four types of vulnerability socio economic socio economic physical and environment vulnerability so these are the types of vulnerability capacity analysis we should make our resources available at the disposal network communication public distribution these are the one these are the capacities of our, our surroundings and we should make transportation ki agar if in identification of capacity vulnerable to the cope the that means it means इन टर्म्स ऑफ डिजास्टर जब कोई डिजास्टर आता है तो हमारे पास कैपेसिटीज लिखी होनी चाहिए लिस्टेड डाउन होनी चाहिए कि हमारे ऑफिस से या हमारे डिपार्टमेंट से या हमारी यूनिवर्सिटी से डिपार्टमेंट से हाउ हाउ फार इज हॉस्पिटल हाउ फार इज पुलिस स्टेशन हाउ फार इज फायर सर्विसेज इफ वी मैंशन एंड की पुलिस सर्विसेज नहीं आ रही है सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप आ सकते हैं अवेयरनेस कंपेन्स हो सकती है स्टोरेज फैसिलिटीज हमारे पास कितनी है इफ वी हैव टू स्टोरेज and what are the basic tools tools is to they, there are different tools to make a disaster management plan first is transit walk transit walk means we should randomly go to a particular area if we are sitting in a department we should go and just observe what where are the possible hazards and what are the possible vulnerabilities things so we should go straightly and we should just observe by our neck tie that these are the problems which i have observed ki yahan pe dikkat ho sakti hai this is known as a transit walk area mapping in terms of social hazard and resources we should area we should demark the things we should make a area profile that these are the things which we are, which have a problems focus on group discussions we should also make a group discussion with the people and the we are saying example of a department we should discuss with the department hods department <laughs> and seasonal calendar we should make a यहाँ पे सीजनल सीजनल वाइज ये डिजास्टर आए थे दिस वी हैव एनकाउंटर दिस डिजास्टर वी शुड थिंक कि किस किस सीजन में किस किस टाइम पे ये डिजास्टर हमने एनकाउंटर करे हैं क्या एरिया प्रोफाइल थी अनदर थिंग इज हिस्टोरिकल प्रोफाइल हिस्टोरिकल प्रोफाइल क्या हिस्ट्री रही है जैसे सपोज करो बिहार की हिस्ट्री इफ वी सी दैट मैनी टाइम्स नॉट नॉट इन लास्ट ईयर बट वी हैव सीन एवरी एवरी ईयर वी फेस फ्लड so this is a history history profile of bihar vulnerability mapping we should demark these are the vulnerable areas these are the people kabhi kabhi kya dekhte hain ki jo river bed hota hai river ganga jaise ganga hai brahmaputra unki side mein ya unke paas mein bahut sare log rehte hain apne aajivika ke liye kuch apna pani karte hain kuch machli ka kaam karte hain machli bekhte hain to kya they are the vulnerable people so we should make a vulnerability mapping also ki itne log yahan pe vulnerable hain and ranking them ki कौन सा हजार सबसे ज्यादा है बड़ा है कौन सा हजार हमें सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावित कर रहा है इन केस ऑफ बिहार वी हैव ऑब्जर्व कि सबसे ज्यादा फ्लड है तो फ्लड को सबसे पहले नंबर पे हम प्रायोरिटी पर रखेंगे कि फ्लड के लिए हमें काम करना है उसके बाद अर्थक्वेक है उसके बाद हजार उसके बाद ड्रोट है या उसके बाद हमारा साइक्लोन है तो वी शुड गिव अ रैंकिंग टू अ डिजास्टर की सबसे पहले रैंकिंग हमें कौन से हजार को देनी चाहिए फील्ड विजिट इज ऑल्सो वेरी गुड एग्जाम्पल फील्ड विजिट मीन्स विजिट अ लोकेशन वी शुड सी वेयर आर द पॉसिबल हजार हाउ वी कैन टेक वी कैन ऑब्जर्व वी कैन ऑब्जर्व बाई अवर नेक डाइज एंड वी कैन इम्प्लीमेंट वाइल मेकिंग डीएम प्लान ट्रांसिट वाइक वॉक आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस की वेन वी गो टू अ फील्ड स्टेटली एंड वी वी विल नॉट गिव एनी कंक्लूजन और वी विल नॉट गिव 
must see and observe that these are the problems talk by sorry so uh, this talk to key point info informant and jo information hoti hai hamare paas jo unko dena hai building report 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 banane and get a secondary data from government sources these are the sources where we can data government sources means newspaper ho sakte hain magazines ho sakti hain and the government of India की वेबसाइट पर जैसे एनडीएमए की वेबसाइट पर कुछ चीजें मिल जाती है एनआईडीएम की वेबसाइट पर डाटा मिलेगा एंड स्टेट को रेस्पेक्टिव स्टेट डाटा रिलेटेड डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट एंड कितनी हिस्ट्री में कौन सा डिजास्टर आया कहाँ पे कितने लोग बसे हुए थे कितने लोगों को नुकसान हुआ दीज आर दिंग्स विच वी कैन गेट इजिली फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट वेबसाइट आई विल कंक्लूड सर इन फाइव मिनट्स प्लीज transit walk or already discussed we can see that walking systematically through a area and discussing various aspect to the areas identification the zone danger and the safe zone also we should observe the both side we should not keep just we see the hazards only we should also see the capacities of our area because capacities are also very in also very important as compared to the hazard jab humne hazard dekhe to hum apni capacities bhi dekhni padegi agar ye nuksan yahan kar sakte hain तो हमारी क्षमताएं क्या है वॉट आर दवर कैपेसिटीज वी ऑल्सो हैव टू डी एंड फर्स्ट एंड पिक्चर्स ऑफ माइक्रो लेवल हमें उनकी पिक्चर लेनी है ट्रांजिट वॉक के दौरान में कि ये ये प्रॉब्लम्स हैं बिकॉज आई ऑलरेडी डन आर बी सी ऑफ बॉयज हॉस्टल ऑफ पंजाब यूनिवर्सिटी सो एट दैट टाइम वी हैव टू क्लिक वी हैव क्लिक द पिक्चोरिकल डायग्राम्स और पिक्चोरिकल थिंग्स फ्रॉम अवर मोबाइल फोन और कैमराज एंड विच विल हेल्प वाइल मेकिंग अ डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट प्लान हजार मैपिंग इज अनदर थिंग एंड historical profile we know what we do historical means we could we use understanding like that past hazards their nature intensity and their behavior also because ki kab aata hai past hazard kaun se the kya nature tha and unki intensity kya thi aur kya uska behavior tha kis tarah se wo chala because then when we see the observe when we see when we take example of a flood flood mein koi fix nahi hota ki pani kab kidhar se aayega It it doesn't have any boundaries. It doesn't have 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 any 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 boundaries. boundaries boundaries then capacities then then it doesn't have any boundaries or any behavior. So we should observe the behavior of a water also. We should observe the behavior of a water also. also. this disaster also and make people aware changes and correct them. Then a group discussion. Group discussion also important as I already told you. Department का अगर हम DM plan बनाए तो we should include the uh, our HODs, our faculty members and the concerned people. Those who can take care of while in case of any discussion. Social map. All the we should, we should also don't we don't want to hurt any sentiments of any religious group. So we should make that where are the religious things. Religious means mandir kahan pe hai, gurdwara kahan pe hai, mosque kahan pe hai, girja ghar kahan pe hai, masjid kahan pe hai. So we should also think about that these things. कि हम जब अपना DM plan बना रहे हैं तो we should also think think. Our in mind and put in our DM plan. कि कहाँ कहाँ पे हैं social institution means like training institute हो सकते हैं institutions हो सकते हैं government of India के institutes हो सकते हैं. We should also demarcate on the our DM plan. Resource and capacities कहाँ where as I earlier told you कि हमें पता होना चाहिए कि हमारी जो capacities हैं वो कहाँ पर हैं. कहाँ पे हमारी police खड़ी है कहाँ पे हमारा resources वाले हैं कहाँ पे where we have our these thing fire services where we have hospitals. So we should demarcate. एस की हमने अभी करीबन साल पहले हमने एनआईडीएम का डीएम प्लान बनाया था तो वी हैव इम्प्लीमेंटेड सो मेनी थिंग्स व्हिच कैन बी हेल्पफुल तो यू कैन आल्सो सी अ डीएम प्लान ऑफ एनआईडीएम ऑन आवर वेबसाइट एंड वी शुड रैंक डिस्ट्रिक्ट जो सबसे ज्यादा प्रभावित होते हैं उनका हम रैंकिंग करके रख लेंगे कि ये ये है और उन डिस्ट्रिक्ट को उन डिस्ट्रिक्ट के प्लान को प्रायोरिटाइज करना हमारी जिम्मेदारी है डीएम एक्टिविटीज को जो की हेल्प कर सकती है डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट के टाइम पे and after that jab hum itna sara kaam kar lenge to we should come to a conclusion that is called as a component content of a dm plan that is have area profile area profile means what are the geographical conditions of the state or what is the geographical condition of a university or a department hazard profile i already told you limlikhit we have to write down possible hazards we have to write down possible risk we have to write down vulnerability of profile means क्या क्या वर्नेबल एरियाज हैं कौन कौन वर्नेबल हैं क्या क्या वर्नेबिलिटीज हैं वी हैव टू लिस्ट डाउन एंड सीजनली सीजनलिटी ऑफ हजार मीन्स क्या क्या उसका कौन से सीजन में आता है कब कब आता है ये शुड वी शुड इम्प्लीमेंट दीज थिंग्स 
these are the temporary template of a dm plan you said you can get a permanent template on the website of an idm or we can say visit ndma website also so these are the things which i would, would like to make here on this presentation if you have any query you can ask me related to Mr. Arun, so far nothing, everybody has appreciated, some information is given, but nobody has raised the question. But obviously, uh, you are that you have uh, given a very beautiful information on disaster management plan. Each and every institute, they should have this disaster plan, management plan. And I believe this, this uh, Central University of Agriculture, Rajendra Gosad, that they will be having this thing. And, and you have given a broad idea to our participants in, in a very nice bias that they have definitely, they will be forced to uh, learn. And the disaster management plan is a very vital component. Very nice things you have explained. Thank so you, far, sir. nothing is raised. And if at all, it will come, I'll let you know. And accordingly, it will be uh, integrated to the concerned participants. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Arun. Now, the next session, are you there, Sudeshna? Yes, sir, I'm here. So, okay, so please, next session is for me. So please, Jill, yeah. it's, it's not required, definitely, for the uh, introduction. Or if you can do within a minute, please do. Sir, I will definitely want to give you an introduction because as someone who has been so actively coordinating the program, everyone mm -hmm. must know your uh, introduction as well, that you are so active in the program. So uh, our next lecture is uh, by Dr. Amrit Lal Halda. And he has obtained his post-graduation degree in exploration geophysics from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur, in 1985. And he further moved on to receive his PhD degree from Vikram University, Ujjain, MP, in the year 2003, which he had pursued during his service tenure. And after passing out from IIT Kharagpur, he served uh, under Danish International Development Project, Government of Orissa, Bhubaneswar, as a geophysicist from 1985 to 1988. And he performed massive groundwater exploration of fresh water in coastal belt of Orissa. Thereafter, he joined Remote Sensing Application Center, UP Lucknow, as Scientist SC, where he elevated up to Scientist SC, SG. Sorry. Worked on geophysical exploration for groundwater on hard rock area of Bundelkhand and as well as Alivil area of entire UP, remote sensing GIS and DGPS, LIDAR and bathymetry. He has done ample of work on cadastral resource mapping for the state of Uttar Pradesh and has completed more than 38 projects sponsored internationally, nationally by the state of UP and other states as well. He was appointed as Director of Remote Sensing Application Center, UP, for a duration of two years and got superannuated in March 2020. He is presently working as a consultant flood monitoring cell at National Institute of Disaster Management, Ministry of Home Affairs, Delhi. And he has to his credit uh, 67 technical papers in international, national journal and symposium. And he has as well visited a lot of international platforms for technical programs such as in France, Italy and Switzerland. We welcome you, sir, and we are excited for your lecture. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for a beautiful introduction. A, a, just one second. Is it coming? Is it visible? My presentation? Yes, sir, but yes, it's visible, but your screen has to be enlarged. Absolutely. Just one second. Now it is visible what I feel. Yes, sir, it is. Okay, let it be like this. If I'll go for enlarge, then some problem may rise. Okay, so please. Okay. So uh, good afternoon to all the dear participants and Jhasab and as well as Sudeshan also. <clears throat> I'll take only for uh, half an hour within that I'll try to complete. You know that uh, right now you heard a lot about the disaster management plan, how it will be done for with the association of different people, different office and the state force and central force, all the things. And disaster plan uh, management plan is very, very essential. Now all those things for the related to disaster, it will be done through the 
uh, GIS, Geoinformatic Infrastructure System. I'll try to uh, believe, uh, brief on that. So for each and every disaster, then to make it the realistic emergency management program and effective, effectively to manage, then it requires the data. Either it may be collected or it has to be displayed or it has to be disseminated in different sources. So without data, it is very difficult to manage. And if you are having the data and re relevant data, you can one by one, you can perform all those uh, steps, all those operations, and that will be very applicable. And with less time taking, you can manage in a beautifully and gigantic way. So desirable, and uh, but obviously it requires the right data. You are having this, say, earthquake disasters. So related to the earthquake, you need, say, but you do not know that earthquake, it has happened, but nobody can go here and there. And condition will be very, very severe condition. But prior to that, you have to make certain data in each and every area, say for the location, say for the uh, this earthquake hazard zone, all the things are to be stored. And whenever this incident is occurring, and or say flood, flood is a very chronic phenomena in Gangetic Plain, especially UP, Bihar, in these areas. It is in Bengal also. So the flood prone area and certain things are need to be uh, get ready that for the during preparation phase. So and the, so the right data and right place and at the right time. If those things will be available, then you can manage, you can cater the disaster to some extent. You can give the relief, you can properly manage. And most of the emergency data, you might be knowing it is not in discrete. It, it requires in map way. It means the special in nature. So if you're having, if you need the, say, suppose a flood, it has taken place, or the flash flood has taken place, or the cloud blast is taken place, you need the uh, X, Y direction, means in map. But this map, it that uh, to visualize or to bring in front of the, uh, say, uh, planners, or the district administration or the central administration that requires the uh, GIS. So GIS can integrate this uh, special map as well as this tabular map in, in proper way and it can give the proper visualization. Now, in general, what is GIS? The internet combined with technologies, that is this, this technology means this GIS, geographic information system, can make possible uh, to better understand uh, and communicate. Obviously, it requires to communicate the socially as well as physical complexities are to be, uh, physical complexity of the disaster it needs to be communicated. So that's why the disaster is very, very useful to communicate all the social and physical complexities of disaster. And you know the disaster is nothing, but it is a computer system oriented and it is information uh, that a geographic information system is a system that creates, manages, analyzes, and map all types of data. It will, it will analyze, it will map, nothing, no brain is required to be used. All those things, it will be uh, manipulated, it will be analyzed beautifully through the GIS. But of course, for that you require some software as well as this hardware. So some example I want to give for the GIS. For example, a single map could include sites. Say suppose some industry is there nearby in some area in Gangetic Plain, say near Samastipur, one industry is there. That industry may be the, say, sugarcane industry or maybe, say, uh, leather industry. So that uh, outputs, it will go specially on the uh, water. Either it may be river, or it may be nearby in Nala or somewhere. And ultimately, it will percolate in the ground. So what happened? Now it is polluting the groundwater. It is polluting the subsurface. And definitely, that GIS, that it can create, it can visualize how much below it has done and when it will go further and up to what depth and what will be the uh, sensitive area say, especially for sugarcane, it, it uh, creates a lot of, say, the, uh, especially for the iron. Of course, iron is not that much uh, 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 harmful element, but still some uh, impact will be there. 
so say for this uh, aesthetic uh, aesthetic legs or say some this uh, dehydration uh, that digestion will not be proper so those things there's uh, you can map it properly in the in the ground as well as this river also and you can manage and such map would help people to determine the and also say suppose in that area the water contaminates so you can uh, you can alarm the people in that area not manually you can see in through the computer generated and accordingly you can alarm them so this is the vulnerable area especially for the pollution point of view of water groundwater or surface water so nicely you can manage you can whereas if you go for this manually it will take a lot of times and you don't know how much i mean accuracy will be there but in gis obviously the water analysis and soil analysis those results are required and it has to feed in the computer and very beautifully it will be given but for that definitely hardware and appropriate software are required and this gis database obviously it is using in business and as as well as everyday life say say mapping of different area in this telecom as well as network services you do not know without uh, without the gis will be puzzled to manage the telecom and other network services similarly in gangetic plain also certain areas are there either in road or in other way say rubbery snatching or say accident will be there so from the past analysis data you can prepare the accident analysis and hotspot which are very very dangerous zone for the people and you can prepare you can generate a map for using the uh, this gis and accordingly so in that area and and obviously those data has to feed that area as well as that uh, remedies where is the thana and where is the some uh, say uh, police uh, with this uh, hospital where is the this uh, where is the first it uh, could be taken those data all those things will be uh, uh, will be uh, feed up in the computer and accordingly it will make the appropriate uh, problem as well as solution also similarly for urban planning the urban nowadays you, nowadays not only nowadays since beginning since inception people are migrating towards the urban area for better uh, of their income and better facility and better education all the purposes so nowadays the urban is increasing like anything and for the urban planning say each 10 years their geographically i mean their position and geographically their location is changing at even doesn't for that urban planning and town planning that gis is needed similarly for transport uh, transportation you see lot of roads are there that roads are uh, you have you can collect from cpwd or pwd you can get ready and after that you want to cover say suppose in the chief minister office or transport uh, uh, on the st uh, state transport department they want to uh, enhance their link and obviously they will see their uh, revenue generation so for that that how many buses are needed they will calculate as well as the uh, how many that uh, passengers or the customer will be there that can calculate so definitely if you plan it or if you make this uh, gis help you can uh, you can put very wise decision and with the appropriate cost also and agriculture you know in the agriculture lot of things our professor jha told and gis can make can give the before time the when the crop harvesting will be there before that that can give the uh, crop production that can what how much the will be the yield say gehu after some time before the harvesting at least one half month or one and half month back they can tell you the how much uh, uh, wheat is going to be produced in that land or in or in that area so that government exchequer how much it will be coming or government exchequer if it is needed if any shortfall is there whatever dr professor jha was telling that in bihar both the things are there uh, parallelly in the same year it is there in the same place same district same flood as well as this uh, drought so after this severe condition if at all any crop is there for their prediction this gis can plan a lot now in the disaster management in the disaster management gis is having very very enormous role say some uh, flood disaster is there cyclone disaster earthquake industrial forest fire all are there so gis will allow in the combination of the different kinds of special data and non special data 
Special data will be there, make firm and non special what I was telling in the beginning, that this is required and GIS can, uh, can do that uh, very precisely, very nicely, very, uh, and the visualization will be also done in proper way. Suppose, <coughs> sorry, some flood has taken place in say uh, nearby area, say Samastipur or Madhubani district, but say very severe flood, nobody can go. But this remote sensing technology, that satellite data, it can get the picture. Of course, that there are two types of satellites are there: optical as well as this uh, our uh, active sensors are there, SAR, uh, SAR data. So during that uh, cloud season or during the rain season, that optical data it may or may not work because due to the cloud cover. But the SAR data, uh, synthetic aperture radar data. It, it can penetrate and it can collect the data and it will give the flood uh, inundated area map properly. So uh, you are having the special in the special map from the satellite data. You cannot go, of course, say a few days if the very incessant rain and very, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, quite a say few, uh, say 100, say more than 600, 700 millimeter rain is there. Nobody can go and say it may if some uh, cloud blast is there. There you cannot think how much damage is there, when people can go. But the satellite data, it can give the realistic picture. And but you need the response, you need the mitigation. So for that, that you are having ready uh, the public, how many uh, villages are inundated, and in that villages, how many people are there, and where are those roads? You can plan it. And with the use of this uh, GI, remote sensing and GIS data, that nicely it can plan, it can mitigate, it can take the decision, you can send the relief also, you can provide the food packet also. But of course, if the helicopter is there, that will be added advantage. But the GIS can give the proper thing. So that's why this commissioner, the relief commissioner, they're taking the help for all those remote sensing data and GIS data during that period, obviously. And, and also the critical facilities such as hospitals, ambulances, fire station, police station, school, all those things, all those attribute data are linked with the spatial map. So whenever events are there, you can, you can click, say you need the ambulance that will be coming if at all it permits the road. If not, then you have to make in some other arrangement and for shifting and for the shelter and similarly policy of to inform school it is school that gis that can give a lot of uh, i mean uh, prevention mitigation and uh, suggestion also so gis is the now is the mainstream part in school also of course they cannot take the decision they cannot prepare the data but the expertise expert of uh, they can prepare the data they can they can hand over the data or they can suggest the how, what are the needed for the school children. Also, they should be motivated. Our, this NIDM uh, idea, NIDM mandate is there, of course, from high school and uh, say college level or say uh, uh, university level, we are making them training and we are making them aware. So GIS is giving a lot of benefits for that. Now, what are the benefits of this GIS? Obviously the cost. You do not know when flood is there, and how many people can go. So, and if at all, if you go, it will take a lot of times. But that's why this GIS layer and GIS uh, visualization, that will save a lot of uh, money. Because after the flood, the concern Potwari or the, say, uh, Lake Pal, they'll be going for the manual survey and they take a lot of times. So it will save the cost also, as well as accuracy also, and better decision making. The GI, in the GIS, uh, uh, in the GIS software, if you put all the things, say uh, flood map, say village boundary, and also if you can put the cadastral map also, that uh, survey number, if you are giving a survey map, cadastral map, then plot wise, how much uh, damage is there, how, how many plots are inundated, all the things briefly and nicely it will be given that for that uh, Potwari or the Lake Pal, they take a they take lot of times and it may not be correct. And in the appropriate location also, they'll be given. So, and they'll be giving, managing very uh, nicely in geographically also. So, so these are the things in GIS, in disaster management plan mapping. 
and the GIS is the participatory role. And for that, the Google Map or the Google Earth Pro is required. That it means the high resolution data if you are using, that will give a lot of added advantage. And the community crisis mapping that is doing by the Usadidi. Now Usadidi is a, uh, that is a type of crisis mapping <coughs> that uh, Usadidi platforms is a uh, simple information collection. The Usadidi, they will be collecting the information and they will create the information and mapping tools that is often combined with cloud sourcing to document crisis information, crisis information, managing OEB, SMS, feedback, blogs. So Osadidi can help on it. It, it is also similar uh, fashion in the similar way, like GIS, they are also collecting the information and data, and that can uh, give a lot of advantage in the GIS uh, decision also. So uh, GIS can you know, do in the flood inundation mapping, what I was telling, and preliminary, the flood damage. Suppose in uh, one village of, say, in this Pusa, that uh, suppose in one uh, area, so more than 100 uh, parcels are being inundated, as say in the first day. Like this, the, if water will be remaining stagnant, so more than three days, then that place water, that place, those are the parcels, whatever the crops are there, that will be damaged. So you can precisely prepare the crop damage by using the GIS and reward sensing data. <coughs> Hazard, vulnerability risk assessment, lot of things are told by our uh, prominent speaker, Mr. Arun Barma. And similarly, we can do the vulnerability mapping, risk assessment mapping, all the things by GIS. But obviously, the same data are required and it, it is need to be fitted and it will give very precise and very uh, accurate uh, area of, say, vulnerability and risk assessment. So I'm not going for the natural man-made, different kinds of, even the stampede is also one disaster that often takes place during religious or say Kumbh Mela and other thing. And even for this metro and other way it is happening. So that is also kind of disaster. And for the disaster, a lot of, uh, for managing disasters, as well as this DM plan, Dr. and Mr. Arun, he said, planning, mitigation, preparedness, response, recovery. Those are the same thing here also, but we'll be managing in uh, software as well as this uh, satellite data. Now you see there are piles of, or, or a lot of I mean, layers are there. In say somewhere it is the location map or say it's the village boundary or in some map it is the water or inundated inundation flood inundation area, and somewhere it is there, say, uh, water uh, pollution, say, wh what are the area that it is affected by the industry. So like this, if you can add more than 10, 15, and you can integrate to proper, to make a proper sense or to make a proper decision by GIS. So this is the capability, this is the beauty of GIS. So all those layers, but of course, in the same uh, type of data should be there, and same uh, UTM system, UTM uh, orientation to be there, and it can give the proper result by using the GIS for taking the decision. Now in the capacity development, the assessment of magnitude of disasters, that is essential. How much uh, the disaster it is having, how much, uh, what is the magnitude of the damage? Similarly for the baseline data, that is required to add with the core data set. And this data collection processing somehow, of course, to some extent, basic data are there, but still the actual data you have to feed and you have to collect within the short time. Then, the and also this remote sensing scheme, you cannot, you have to take it. Of course, the stakeholder participants are needed, that stakeholders in that area, that wherever the disaster has taken place, whoever stakeholders are there, their participants are needed. And it will, the information, need assessment we can make using this coordinate wise institutional uh, institution wise and proper work, proper location wise now what is gis it is having two features suppose you can see the tree that it it there you will uh, see that what what is the location in geographically 
it will give so latitude and longitude wise it will give and similarly the what is the characteristics of that area of that tree say it is oak so it is height of 15 meter and say if you know the age say 15 years or say 52 years like that so these two things will be fitted in the gis and you can do randomly for all the things it is a point location similarly for the line polygon all the information it will generatively create so this information that again i am telling gis means of storing retrieving sorting and comparing of spatial data to support some analytic process here you see that uh, this is the uh, this is the line for the uh, longitude these are the lines say green line yellow line horizontal lines are the lines of longitude similarly for latitude are the horizontal lines are there so this red and green junction that is zero zero and if you shift this side it will go say in north and, and, and now this is left hand side this is north and this is south side similarly top you will go east and bottom will go west like this you will get the latitude longitude in degree minute second and also decimal also earlier what was the uh, traditional gis at that time map the hard copy will be there either by cloth made cloth bounded or by say uh, butter paper making <laughs> that that uh, that was the hard copy similarly the typewriter was there and manual drafting tools were there these are the the earlier traditional gis tool but in the new gis computer is there plotter is there or scanner is there cd rom is there <coughs> <coughs> so various types of gis applications are there in the environment lot of things are there that you can cater by using GIS similarly for infrastructure, say transport. What I was telling that you can manage <coughs> the route location and other thing and utility management. Say suppose uh, say earlier that Ambedkar village was there. In the Ambedkar village, how many uh, say uh, hand pumps are there? How many light lamp posts are there? And how many roads are pakka or kacha, all those information required and the GIS and GPS, they will make it quickly and very accurately. And similarly for the military, that will be used, GIS and also socioeconomically, say town and country, what I was telling, monitoring our population, uh, say from the village to how many people they are migrating each year, you can monitor using the uh, computer, using the GIS. And similarly for the dispersion of resources and services. And at, uh, equally, you can see how many clinics and schools are there. You can monitor by using the GIS. <laughs> In GIS, there are uh, two types of data. That is vector data and raster data. After scanning, and if you are putting the, say, uh, some uh, geographical information, then it will be vector data. And before scanning, that is the raster data. Raster is that it is the continuous and discrete data. And discrete data, suppose some population density is there, that is the discrete data. But some say temperature, it is a continuous data and elevation measurement, these are the continuous data. And real world, that when you put the earth coordinate, then it will come in the real world and it will give all the things. And that is GIS, geographical information. GIS, that ge uh, geographical information are required. So here, line, point, and polygons are there. In GIS, it is there. And vulnerability assess assessment, what our uh, Mr. Arun, he was explaining very better way, that uh, GIS can provide useful information to boost disaster awareness with the government and the public on national level and decision can be taken to establish or expand disaster management organization in, uh, in general level the objective is to give inventory of disasters and simultaneously it has to identify whether it is a low risk zone high risk zone or are more uh, vulnerable area or less vulnerable area all those things it can uh, it can uh, disappear using the gis software All those things are covered by our thing. 
now you see the remote sensing gs what you will do during preparedness period so before flood before flood you have to prepare you have to know you have to identify the flood prone areas and prior information on probable flood affected areas with considerable lead time in lead time you have to get the prior information in those areas and optimum evacuation plan see evacuation plan you have to get ready and that those things you can do by using your database and physically you can visit the area you can prepare the uh, evacuation plan similar relief and rescue that is during operation all those things you are having the database from there you can manage and after flood you have to manage the what are the drainage congestion zone what is the flood risk zone all those things you have to know and you have to manage superficially structurally after the flood now this is a one uh, say you, you can see the green colors are the parcel that is for one village of up in uh, mo districts so in this village say you see the blue colors solid blue line blue colors are there it shows the flood inundated area in this village a few parcels are being affected or inundated by flood so for if uh, immediately after the flood nobody can go but this gis it can give precisely how many parcels are affected or how many parcels are 50% affected how many parcels are there 40% affected all those things you can clearly see and similarly uh, in that village that is uh, so 1.56 square kilometer total area and that flood inundated area was there 0.68 that is 43% area was flood affected now if the water remains more than 3 days those enter area or the area which is affected for 3 days inundation then crop loop damage so you can think on putting the mobja after or the compensation after the flood and that will take very less time now this is another thing of the say uh, in, that is also confluence of uh, two river that due to the flood inundation the river banks are shifting it is very common in bihar even koshi river it is been shifted almost say 100 km and that is having so whenever the uh, rivers are getting chances that they are cutting the embankment and that thing you can map it gis and you can see that certain villages earlier that was within this district now it is also it is in the district but the rivers has been migrated so you can see the confluence area as well as the area which is very very flood prone and the total solidity of the uh, of the district you can see this is the Uh, this river is the gomti river this is the sarai river you can see the confluence and can manage it now one important map i want to show that is the beauty of gis that it can integrate the different area here say rainfall map is there bihar is prone to rainfall in somewhere here you see dark green color that is the rainfall in 120 mm se above hai and cyan color it is there no no uh, of course uh, that is uh, red color is 244 say 273 mm jahan pe rainfall hai wo sabse zyada area hai red color in the top of this map area of course this map is from some uh, indonesia but uh, for uh, all those uh, that needed uh, themes are there that's why i have selected and similarly if you can um, uh, grade it or you can categorize it low rainfall in the same uh, year or same time and say five zones you have categorized so 120 to 150 mm 150 to 180 mm and like this finally 1 240 to 273 so five zones have categorized and here slope map is there due to the slope that water will be going moving fastly and it will not go uh, percolate and it will drastically it will be flowing so that it can create the flood walls in that area now here the slope is also five uh, slope is been taken and this municipality boundaries are there in uh, this blue lines a uh, black lines and here another map is taken that is elevation so maximum elevation in red color this is the 2240 meter and lowest is the 440 the green color solid green that is the 448 meter 
So these are the area it has been categorized and it is depicting in the color, solid color. Similarly, soil type is there, clay loamy soil is there. There is a green and this soil, this is a sandy clay. And similarly for drainage density map, it is also shown here, population density because the vulnerability will be calculated on the basis of population density. And using this AHP method, that is automated hierarchy analysis process, AHP process, we have created a hazard map. You see, it has given the rank, say red color, dark red to uh, green color. That is green color is very low risk, L is the risk and H is the very high risk and M that is the CIF, that is the uh, orange color, that is the moderate risk. So you can create it by this hazard map. Now, <coughs> if you in integrate the hazard map with the population density, then you can create the flood risk map. So this is the capacity or capability only the GIS. Manually, it is very, very difficult and it will take a lot of time. You cannot get the accuracy also. But using this GIS integration, a lot of uh, processors are there for integration, but here it is we have taken the hierarchy, uh, hierarchy uh, analytic pro hierarchy process, and it has given within no time the flood risk map. Similarly, for the earthquake, earthquake generally it happens not uh, all the times. Frequencies say it may be say one day, two day, very less time in Nepal. Obviously, it was there in 2015. Uh, one day, two day, three day, it was there. But generally, very big earthquake, it, it takes 100 years or 150 years like that. Now, in the GIS, if you know the location or epicenter of the GIS, you can map it. And certain, uh, as per the seismologists, uh, it was uh, by them that uh, earthquakes are repeated. So it may be say, 100 years or say, 200 years afterwards like that. So if you're having those maps, you can precisely, you can see the epicenters and future also, if because of the measure you can take, because measure how you'll be taking, especially by making the houses by rest and free and proper engineer you have to adopt. So similarly for the forest and the forest fire are often taking place in different region, subtropical pine forests are there. And you can, you can get the statistics, say, starting from 2009, High occurrence, uh, high occurrence of fire were there. 2010, moderate occurrence, of, uh, moderate occurrence of fire were there in Terai Belt in the uh, Himalayan region, and similarly 2012 also. So, modus of apparently from step one to near the real time forest fire, you can get it, and you can that separates data are there. That is the uh, uh, from this using this satellite data. Uh, that uh, even this uh, high resolution satellite data, Sentinel data is using, MODIS data are using. So beautifully we can manage. And what Jhasa was telling, that is for the drought. The drought is also using the MODIS data, Sentinel data for precise mapping. So these are the very, very appropriate things to do the mapping also for drought. Now it is the drought. You see the NOAA data is there earlier, there is to take, but nowadays AOIPS, Landsat, obviously and sentinel two data they are using for declaring or for getting the each 15 days interval what is the uh, uh, drought intensity and you can think on that because he was telling and it is obviously true in bihar the drought and flood both used to taking place side by side in a month or in 15 days so this satellite data and gis can give a lot of relief for the uh, disappearing the area so this is one area, say, uh, in the UP, that is there, that is near uh, Hariyarpur, Gonda districts in Rapti River. That they are also like Kosi, that uh, banks, that rivers are changing their courses. So here you see the uh, dark red, blue color is there in present uh, condition of the river. But earlier you see the meandering was a fire, it was here. It may be, say, more than five, six kilometer as per the scale. And they are the, you have to select, of course, bridges are there, but uh, due to the uh, soil property and other thing and dynamism of uh, uh, soil, uh, river, uh, dynamics of uh, river, that these are the, not the appropriate place to make the bridge. So,
So this uh, this white patches are there. You can see this is the sodicity. If white patches are there in those parcels, there no crop will be taken. That it means that is the A grade. Just one second. You see here the uh, red colors parcels are there. Red color parcel with C class sodicity. Here no crop will be there. If the B class is there, yellow color uh, and those things you can diagnose by using the satellite data. And B class, at least one crop will be uh, produced. And A class, that is green color, after from A, you have to manage it, you have to uh, process it, the soil, then you can go for A class. There, two crops will be taken. So it is a plenty of lands are there in different places, say Punjab, UP, the Saudi city. And using the satellite and remote sensing, you can plan it, you can diagnose it. This is the white patches are there. These are the uh, maximum Saudi city land. Now the red color are there, so those are the crops are there, and similarly for the greenish color there are there. That is the one crops is growing. So this is the action plan for land resources. Uh, it is in Bundelkhand area. We have prepared say uh, for the uh, fodder in which places the fodder will be appropriate uh, appropriate uh, area for production of fodder, afforestation and uh, say regeneration a lot of accents are there in agro horticulture all the things are given in color wise i'm not explaining details so gis and remote sensing that can that is the beauty that can give make proper action plan so different line departments are there who are involving for what irrigation department are there that is embankment wall or the embankment is blocking they are taking care flood route uh, routing straightening construction of storage linking of rivers so nowadays that uh, betwa uh, betwa uh, kane river linking is there so irrigation department mostly they will take the leading so different similarly forest departments are there they will take for the uh, forest fire uh, and the forest degradation a lot of things they will take similarly for cpwd they will construct the road and jalnigam or public health engineering they will take care for the say uh, drought management and that uh, contingent plan for the area for drinking water or uh, rap water uses domestic uses in that area that jalnigam and public health engineering so i am not going into details of that one sample yes this is the i will definitely say this is the that uh, Gorakhpur Maharaj Bagh districts. It was happened in 1999. At a time in a single place, so much rainfall was there. Nine or eight uh, reservoirs are broken, and that uh, flood, that water could not go properly because it was desilted since uh, uh, early, and it could not. And that water was impounded more than 29 days. A lot of havoc damages are there. Many people are killed due to the flood affected. And this is the radar set data or microwave water set data in that area. Now you see the solid color is the flood inundated area. And these other areas are there. Of course, it is flood inundated, but not that much. But this solid color is having depth of a lot of depth in that area. Now in optical data, that green color is there, where the water was there say more than 29 days now this is the area what i was telling so suppose say uh, this was, uh, horizontal uh, lines are there settled lines are there lines are there in those villages they are having some critical facility physical facility means some primary health center there or dispensary is there some school is there so that during flood you can ship that area you can ship public in that area and roads are there properly. So these are the critical facilities which has been prepared in Maharaj Ganj, Tahsil and, uh, and also Gorakhpur. It, it is for the Maharaj Ganj, uh, Tahsil. Similarly for Gorakhpur also it is prepared. So it was, this is the integrated map, flood inundation map in the Gorakhpur districts. Now I will conclude the using this uh, GIS and remote sensing, you can go for proper management and proper mapping similarly for the flood also natural disaster is a common but you cannot stop you have to adopt with the flood you have to be resilient in that and remote sensing and gis is very efficient tool for flood mapping suitability analysis through gis can be useful for emergency response and disaster preparedness and risk reduction so thank you very much
this is from my side so if anything want to know further let me know so this now you are there yes sir i am just a minute sir i don't know if any question please can you check or let me check yes sir yes i am checking no sir as far as i can see there are no questions uh, till now then we tell just kun please sir sorry sir kya bataya aapko dene so no issue no problem but uh, they might be tired for that of course uh, of course whenever they are generally no no sir today. it was a wonderful lecture thank you sir no issue and what about our jhasab jhasab is there How yes sir he is he is <laughs> and uh, this is the basic question for our uh, this uh, our participants how they will get the certificate participants uh, jhasab would, would you like to say, comment anything on my presentation uh, all the presentations <laughs> excluding me all the presentations were very nice and i am very thankful that you have invited me as a, as a resource person so all the person the lecture from warma was also very nice and we will enjoy it and your lecture was, was wonderful really so we enjoyed it very much and uh, and uh, i think uh, uh, tomorrow we will start the next session so for for this <laughs> is uh, it is very fine sir Now I would like uh, I would like to share a few points to our these participants. Participants, uh, I would like to highlight all the times. So please put your name properly. Again, you are putting your name on digit. If you are putting on digit, then your computer can di cannot diagnose. You cannot eligible for the certificate. And also sometimes you are putting your absent name. So those names we have to eliminate. We cannot uh, the computer cannot diagnose. They will be stopped there. So we have to eliminate. So please put your You are putting your this proper mail ID, but you are not somewhere say 0.5 percent, a 0.05 persons, uh, uh, persons, uh, uh, public uh, students or uh, participants are there. They are using such type of uh, things in digit or very in uh, odd way their names. So please make it very meaningful way so that you can get the certificate. Because nothing is in our hand. Computer will be generated the certificate. Provided if you are having sixty percent attendance, out of hundred percent, at least sixty percent attendance should be there needed. And also, you need to enroll. Without enrollment, you cannot get the certificates. And of course, you will get the certificate through your hand only. Wherever you have done for enrollment, you see their feedback is there. So you fill the feedback form immediately to be generated. Not now, after completion of feedback. So, uh, my dear, please do all those things. and for your own benefit and for the nation's benefit and for then definitely we will be thinking that you are uh, you are following our disaster management support uh, whatever we are sharing you whatever this university is doing for the uh, betterment of the country they have done lot of work on drought and similarly for the plan also what jhasa has demonstrated i was wonder so please take the facility and get this benefit by proper way Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for a nice presentation. Yeah, I love it. Collaboration. Collaboration. Thank you, sir. Mr. Varun, you are there. Krishna. Varun. Varun may not be there because no, no problem, sir. Okay, sir. Then we will make leave here and okay, sir. leave it at the Thank same you, time. Sir. So program will be there from two thirty, but uh, two o'clock onwards I'll put it on. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Tomorrow we'll see. Bye. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye. Our uh, Sudeshna, please yes, uh, send the report. Please send the report. Yeah, so yeah, I am in the, the process report. of preparing, sir. It's okay, sir, okay, and I expect to send only, it very soon. Only you need the three persons. What they said, say few sentences. That's all. Okay. okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Bye.